The following is an exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports. set the scene for a college football weekend that leads to Halloween. A time when hunters hunt their prey and growl on every hit. And runners stride with every beat, a heart that cannot quit. When tigers howl and jackets swarm and bands play coolest tunes, a time when fans may lose their brains and howl up at the moon. The stage is set, so teams beware. Avoid that losing hex. It's the Tigers and the wreck from Tech coming up next. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents the Exxon ACC Game of the Week from Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. It's the Clemson Tigers and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Hello, everybody. Along with Doc Walker, I'm Jack Corgan. Welcome to homecoming here in Atlanta. Big sports weekend, of course, and an important football game between two teams in terms of trying to stay alive in the bowl picture. And trying to make it to the biggest bowl game possible. It's amazing. You know, Tech undefeated at home. Clemson undefeated on the road. Something has to give this afternoon. One of the things we are going to feature this afternoon, outstanding running games from both teams. For Georgia Tech, it's Mr. Glide, C.J. Williams. Smooth and silk. Has an idea of what he wants to do with the football. And that is elude defenders and work his way to the end zone. Been quite impressive this year. For the Clemson Tigers, their big man, Raymond Priester, no doubt what he's going to do. Oh, boy, big and powerful. If you're in his way, folks, he just might run you over. And he shows here against NC State he can get outside as well. The game may really hinge on the play, not only of the tailbacks, but the fullbacks, Emory Smith and Charles Wiley. Monstrous. Five yards of carry, eight touchdowns, Emory Smith, Mr. Inside. I think today he'll be featured in a big way. And for Charles Wiley, he is a guy who can also get outside for a youngster. I like him. He has a little CJ in him, a little combination, but he can run between the tackles as well as anyone else. In the 90s, Clemson and Georgia Tech has become quite a football game. When we return to Atlanta, we'll talk more about the Jackets and the Tiger rivalry. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, proud corporate partner of ACC football. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By Continental Airlines, the official airline of the ACC, flying to more than 160 destinations worldwide. By Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By CarQuest Auto Parts Stores. For the CarQuest store nearest you, call 1-800-492-PART. By your local Mazda dealers. By Lee Apparel. With new styles and colors, you'll like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. And by First Union. When it comes to service, everything matters. It is homecoming here on the campus of Georgia Tech University in Atlanta, Georgia, and the Yellow Jackets are getting ready to come out onto the field. As I mentioned, this has become an interesting series between the Yellow Jackets and the Tigers in the 90s. In fact, in the 1990 season, it was a comeback victory by Georgia Tech that helped power them to their last national championship. And as you look at the scores in the last five contests, they've all been close. Last year's the biggest margin, and that one was not really decided till the closing moments. With more on the rivalry between Tech and Clemson, down to the sidelines in our Mike Hogwood. Yeah, Georgia Tech feels that Clemson has replaced the old rivalry with Auburn that they used to have, and it's really the big game on their schedule other than the Georgia Bulldogs. And there's a lot to play for this year. Both teams are four and three. Both teams only have two conference losses. Huge log jam up towards second place as you fight for these bowl bids. Both teams feel a win today is an absolute necessity towards heading on the stretch run and getting a bowl bid at the end of the year. Should be a great game. Clemson and Georgia Tech the kickoff coming up next from Atlanta. With Doc Walker and Mike Hogwood, Jack Corgan. Glad you could join us for the game with Clemson and Georgia Tech. We had about eight hours of torrential rains last night. 
But the weather is gorgeous right now here in Atlanta. 60 degrees right now, and the clouds have all but dissipated from the sky. The field, that new prescription athletic turf, will be in good shape for Tommy West Clemson Tigers. Tommy in his second season, a 10 and 9 mark overall with the Tigers. And George O'Leary with his Yellow Jackets in his first full campaign has yet to lose on the field that he said belongs to us and we have to create that kind of atmosphere. Chris Leon will be kicking off for Georgia Tech with Undra Williams number 25 and the scary guy on a Halloween weekend for the opposition number 19 Antoine Wyatt back to receive the opening kick. <laughs> it towards Williams it's a short kick on the 17 yard line Williams tried to get outside but couldn't do much as he is tripped down at the 25 yard line by Vernon Strickland so Neilon Green will start the show for the Clemson Tigers went out late in the first half last week against Maryland with a sprained ankle is probably not at 100 percent but good enough to be back he practiced pretty much full go Wednesday and Thursday this week. Clemson comes out in its familiar eye formation and on first down they give it to the big fullback Emory Smith. He drives straight into the arms of Ron Rogers as he picks up a couple. Let's set that Clemson Tiger offense besides Neilon Green and Emory Smith. They'll have Raymond Priester at tailback. Lamont Hall basically a blocking tight end. Tony Horn and Antoine Wyatt the principal receivers. Good offensive line and the big right tackle Robert Jackson coming off his best game as a Tiger. On second down. They again go with Smith and the big fullback is out near first down yardage as he piles up behind Trevor Putnam and Will Young Jermaine Miles the man to make first contact for Georgia Tech. Miles Jackson Bradford and Hughes along the front line good linebacking core good young linebacking core veteran secondary headed up by the safeties Ryan Stewart and Mike D and I like Nathan Perriman at the cornerback spot third and short yardage so far just what Doc Walker expected lots of Emory Smith and three times in a row and I don't know if it was a charm because Ralph Hughes got great penetration and stood up Emory Smith with help from Mike D. I still like what they're doing, Jack. You've got it. You got the workhorse there. You may fail, like in this instance, but down the road, Smith is the key. Feed him inside and soften up the two tech inside backers. Something no one's done this year. Also, a great job by Al Jackson, the nose guard, to really clog things up. It forces Chris McAnally, the number one rated punter in the Atlantic Coast Conference, to get it away towards Nathan Perriman. Who is a great kick returner, and they wanted to kick it away from Nathan. He gets it on the 20. Sidestepped a couple of men and got it back to the 33 yard line. Pretty good field position. Brian Dawkins on the stop for Clemson. So Georgia Tech, which has scored on its first possession, its last six ball games, comes out on the field under the leadership of senior Donnie Davis out of Burlington, North Carolina. Donnie, the ACC Player of the Week a couple of weeks ago against the Duke Blue Devils. Had a tough time against Florida State in Tallahassee, but who hasn't in 95? Davis changing the play as the huddle clock is down to five. And he's going to put it up on first down. Over the middle, risky pass. For Derek Stegall, and here comes a flag. Contact from Leamont Evans might have been a little bit too soon. So, well, breaking up a, a key breaker for Georgia Tech to come out and try to go vertical to start the game off with Donnie Davis. Michael Dober will mark off the penalty. Let's, it'll be a 15 yard infraction. And it will move the ball out close to midfield. Pass interference against the defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. Start looking about pass interference. The thing you, you look for is contact. Contact prior to the football. Cut Stiegel off as he tried to come to the ball. Could have gone in 
either way perhaps in their minds the officials called it against Clemson on first down C.J. Williams to the Clemson 41 most important thing now for Tech and their offensive linemen is that they stay on blocks if you stay on blocks with a guy like C.J. who has great peripheral vision you'll get the cutback the cutback will occur naturally if you stay on your blocks the great vision by Williams to a huge hole first and ten for Georgia Tech in Clemson territory Zachary comes in motion Williams again fights it down to the 39 yard line let's set that Georgia Tech offense for you Anthony Simmons with another stop for the Tigers Donnie Davis Charles Wiley at fullback and Williams the tailback Grant Bainham and Chris Myers will play the tight end spot Zachary and Stiegel veteran offensive line McGee Dukes and Cheever the three seniors well actually McGee is a junior are the keys to a good offensive front and especially today with Anthony Simmons as he looms in the freshman who's just been exceptional thus far. Williams fights it straight ahead again. Raymond White, the sophomore out of Clinton, Mississippi, with the tackle for Clemson. Defensively, the Tigers' defensive front coming off a great game. Simpson, Curry, White, Sapp, Simmons, and McCrory, the linebackers, as well as Brett Williams. And a pretty good secondary, guys who like to make contact, especially Dawkins and McLean. Third down and six for Georgia Tech. 40% efficiency on the year. Davis to the sidelines, too far for Cedric Zachary. George O'Leary now will decide, go for it, punt it away, or try the field goal, and it looks like he's gonna punt it away. Well, out of character for Tech not to come out and be successful, put points on the board in the opening drive, somewhat got out of way, got away from their formula. This is a team again when you've got a young man averaging 121 yards per game in the backfield. True One freshman time. stick to him a little bit. True freshman Rodney Williams into punt, took over the punting duties last week, trying to angle it towards the corner. Plenty of yellow jackets down there, and they. Will touch the ball dead at around the five yard line. 10.59 to play here in the first quarter. No score, the Tigers and the Yellow Jackets. You are watching Atlantic Coast Conference football, the Jefferson Pilot Exxon ACC Game of the Week from Atlanta, Georgia. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets on homecoming hosting the Clemson Tigers. No score, each team with one possession in the early going and Clemson will be backed up inside its own five yard line. Emory Smith carried it the first three times. How about four in a row? Smith gets about three and a half out close to the nine yard line. Keith Brooking, the other young inside linebacker on the hit for Georgia Tech. And I, I love it. I think this is exactly what you want to do. Ron Rogers, Keith Brooking, number one respectively for Tech, 77 tackles. Uh, these guys are so active, so involved in this run defense that you want to get them accustomed to Emory Smith, and then eventually you're going to get Green and Priester out on the edge. Smith averages about 12 carries a ball game, four here in the early going. Five in a row with Smith. Good job by that defensive front wall of Georgia Tech to stack things up. Al Jackson and Derek Shepard. You don't always get much time to talk about nose guards, Doc, but Al Jackson, the junior, good one, has made an, a huge difference on that front wall for the Georgia Tech defense. Well, you look at number one ranked rush defense in the country. It all starts with that triangle. Jackson, Brooking, and Rogers. Awesome. Play action. Green's first pass of the day. Downfield for Tony Horn. He had it, but he was out of bounds. Nick Ferguson on the coverage. Green led him a little too far, and the Tigers will have to punt it away again. Yeah, a little unfortunate for Nilon. He said he knows he missed him, but the key is that you send a message. A, that you're willing to throw down in your own territory, and B, that the receiver can work itself open. Again, they're just setting them up. Clemson right now just trying to establish tempo. 
Chris McAnally knows he has to get rid of this one in a hurry. Another wobbly kick off the side of his foot, and Georgia Tech will have outstanding field position in Tiger territory at the 35-yard line of Clemson. Just a 25-yard kick by Chris McAnally. The defense of Georgia Tech has been outstanding all year, even giving up 42 points and 41 completions to Florida State and Danny Canella a week ago, Doc. It was the lowest output of the season <laughs> for the Seminoles. <laughs> that is staggering. Oh, Florida State. Well, what an arsenal. True freshman Phillip Rogers in the ballgame at tailback as Chris Myers goes in motion. Rogers tries to cut back. And he is dropped in the backfield by Lamarick Simpson, the senior out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Simpson will pick up the stats. Carlos Curry is the guy you ought to buy a milkshake for because Curry, as you mentioned early on, up down, those down linemen, whale of a game against the Maryland Terrapin. And on that play, he was disruptive to say the very least. Last week, the Clemson front four sacked Brian Cummings of Maryland six times. No sacks by the secondary. They just rushed four men, but quite effectively. Second and long, Davis on the roll. Donnie turns the corner. Davis inside the 30. Covered up there by Brian Dawkins. He'll be about three yards shy of the first down. Both of these teams have quarterbacks who they'd like to see him outside on the edge. Get him on the edge, they can make things happen. Mel Bowers on this comes out fullback and still maintains that you know a, a hat on hat and allows him to get around the edge. Donnie Davis averaging better than four yards of carry. Third down situation. The blitz is on. Sapp doesn't get there in time, but he forced a bad pass. And it'll be fourth down. Well, that was close on Sapp. Dexter McLeon on the coverage of Cedric Zachary. Now that's a missed opportunity. This is a missed opportunity for the Yellow Jackets. You get down here in, in gold country, I like to call it, and you, mean you really want to be effective and threaten the end zone. David Frakes is going to try a 46-yard field goal. It would be his longest of the season. Frakes with his best kick yet as a Yellow Jacket. And Georgia Tech is on the board. 3-0 with 8-10 to play in the first quarter. Back after these messages from your local ACC station. Just about a full house here at Bobby Dodd Stadium for Clemson and Georgia Tech. Here's another look at the field goal of Dave Frakes. Longest in the Still young career of the sophomore from Rockford, Illinois, the 46 yarder. And history is holding true so far. Clemson has been outscored in the first quarter much of the year, and Georgia Tech has outscored the opposition about the same way. Leon with a squib kick that Wyatt fields on his 12. Antoine Wyatt slips through a crease and takes it out to the 35 yard line where Vernon Strickland is again the special teams tackler. So Clemson will get its best field position on this its third drive of the afternoon. They have let the fullback carry the ball five times and tried one pass on their first possession. Raymond Priester coming off a career high 163 yards has yet to touch the football. And they take care of that right there, but Priester finds a whole covey of white-shirted yellow jackets and had to work hard to get the yardage he did. Yeah, but without the real good belly out of the fullback. See, this was a designed play to get outside. Emory Smith misses his block. That's just great pursuit. Excellent pursuit. Keith Brook and company, I mean, they're just like a magnet on you, man. They, they jump to you. Jimmy Clements gets credit for the first hit. Second and six option. Green slipped about three tacklers to get two yards. Mike D finally wrestled him to the turf. Again, it all starts with Emory Smith. Watch and see. Is there a good mesh? No. 
See, I think if you're going to run that option, ride it down. You really have to make these guys think that Emory Smith is going to carry the football. They are just too good to take a weak fake. That's just been poor execution on the option. Clemson normally a pretty good third down team. They're 0 for 2 here this afternoon. Green on the roll. Has his man for the first down. It's Joe Woods, the transfer from Ole Miss. Out near the 50-yard line, the Clemson drive stays alive. A great catch by Joe. A to come back, catch the football, then take a knock and hold on. They'll spot the ball at the Clemson 49-yard line halfway through this opening period. Clemson trailing three to nothing, but on the move. Priester again stepped inside of Jimmy Clemens and got it down to about the 47 yard line. We talk a lot about in the open about his vision and, and the great ones that have the ability to instinctually come back and watch this again. Robert Jackson good placement up front. See he keeps good pad plays and that's the key to it. When you get those guys up front uh, Morgan Jackson Young Putman wide body staying on you're going to give you back a chance. Second down is Emory Smith right behind Trevor Putnam and Glenn Roundtree, but he is stacked up by Ralph Hughes, and it'll be another third down situation. We had probably an inch to an inch and a half of rain here in Atlanta last night, but the field looks to be holding up pretty well. Let's go down to Mike Hogwood and maybe get an up-close update on the running conditions. Mike? The field's in excellent shape, Jack. They said it, it drains like uh, incredibly with this new prescription turf, and so the, the one rain ended about 2 o'clock in the morning. And there is no wetness or slipperiness on the field at all. Pressure on Green. He gets it away. Wyatt with an excellent catch, and it's another Clemson first down. Ryan Stewart put the hit on him right as the ball arrived, but the junior from Daytona Beach, Florida, comes up large for the Tigers. Key to playing good defense is that you challenge on every play, and the Yellow Jackets, they just demonstrate this. I mean, this is a great catch. There's contact. That's what you want defensively and offensively. That's just a special athlete. Antoine Wyatt, his father Alvin, a fine player in the NFL with the Buffalo Bills now coaching at Bethune-Cookman. Second first down of the drive, first penetration into Georgia Tech territory. Bootleg, wide open Wyatt. It's another Tiger first down. Mike D runs him out of bounds at the Georgia Tech 28. Yeah, that's pure recognition. Now I give Leon, Leon Green a lot of credit on this because see he recognizes quick that you got the play action fake on that. Will Young is your personal protector. Boom, he gets rid of it real quick. And then once again, he's Antoine, Antoine Wyatt working himself up to the yard marker. Wyatt averaging better than 15 yards of reception on the year among the league leaders. First and 10, Georgia Tech. Five minutes to play here in the first period. Smith, huge hole. Emory Smith inside the 20 before Keith Brooking rides him down. Back down to the sidelines, Mike Hogwood. Now you mentioned Emory Smith, just a big run, and uh, one guy who just showed up and really happy with that is Emmett Smith, who plays for the Dallas Cowboys. And of course, uh, Dallas, uh, Emmett and Emory are brothers, and Emmett has got a big smile on his face the way his brother's running here today. Well, the last time the Smith brothers were in Atlanta, they were MVPs, Emory of the Peach Bowl and Emmett of the Super Bowl. Yeah, that was special. Smith again, another Clemson first down. Keith Crooking on the stop, but the 240-pound junior from Pensacola moves it inside the 15. Putman, Young, Roundtree, guys on that wedge. This is street fight, folks. I just love this. See, pad on pad. Look at those guys bunching. See, he's making contact right now on Rodgers. He's knocking it back just seven yards downfield. You get a 240-pound fullback with the ball, and everything goes your way. First and 10, Tigers. Ball resting at the Georgia Tech 14. Steps a man and then is stood up by Ron Rogers. Short yardage for Raymond Priester, who is closing in on a thousand yards. We had a run through. First, I think it was Hughes who comes in. But last time it was Clement who tried to get the run through like a blitz and stop the run. You can't blitz against the run, but this is just smash mouth football on both sides. Tech's up to the challenge. Of course, Clemson's going to give. 
step the challenge up. The 11th play of the drive for the Tigers at the Georgia Tech 11. Play action by Green to the end zone over the head of Tony Horn. Nick Ferguson on the coverage. Great coverage. Good scheme by Tech. Al Jackson won the battle up front at the nose tackle spot. And this is just the beauty of this. So far, Green's had plenty of time to throw. That's just good coverage. That really is. Father, five white shirts and one orange. <laughs> That's best to run uh, with those run formations that you throw out of. Third, third down of this now 12 play drive. They have converted the last two as they operate from the shotgun. Green slips one man. Flags fly as Neilon Green is a couple of yards shy of the first down. And let's wait for Michael Dover's indication of what the infraction is. It's a holding call against the Tigers. This play, this game so far has taken on fourth quarter proportions. Bundren right at the end. It appears he's got a great block. What we don't see is the outside hand and whether or not it's locked on. If it is, then it's a call. If not, Here's the offense. Let's see if we can see it. Let's watch the war on Miles. It might have been called. I don't know if that's strong left outside arm looked good. It looked good. Then again, I'm always going to give the offensive guy a little credit. Well, the rule is when they changed it to allow the extension of arms, you have to stay within the frame. When the hands get away from the body, that's when sometimes the flags fly. A guy played for Joe Bugle. He would give that an A+. Plus. They can get a first down at the four. Blitz is on, but they find the receiver. Tony Horn, first down, Clemson. Neilon Green. Ron Rogers was flying in on the blitz, but Green stood tall. I like the idea for Tech, get somebody in his face. But watch the footwork. See, that's what makes it so special. A, he understands how far he's got to get downfield. Then he makes the catch, secures it, and now watches down. See the eyes? Man, that's just good football. Tony Horn, the sophomore from Rockingham, North Carolina, keeps the Georgia Tech defense on the field because the Clemson drive moves on. One thing about the Tech defense, they have forced Clemson to be balanced. Have they thrown no more now than they, they'd like to throw, but this is what brings the very best out of you, and Tech is baffling. You can see how effective this team is when they get first and goal. Emory Smith makes it touchdown, Clemson, yes. Big brother Emmett says touchdown, Emory, and Clemson has taken the lead. You know, it, it, five times in a row early on, it ran and didn't pick up a lot. But offensive football, great tag block right there by Bunker once again. Boy, that's smoking off the edge. It all happens with the back, but that offensive line, watch the tag. See, he slips up to the second level, gets in that time on Ron Rogers, and the result is a touchdown. Tigers. Jeff Save's conversion is through the uprights, and with 2.34 to play here in the first quarter. Clemson has its first lead, 7-3, back after this word from Carquest Auto Parts. 7-3 Clemson as they go 65 yards in 13 plays and grind out five and a half minutes plus. Emory Smith finished it off with the three-yard touchdown run. A couple big pass plays in that as well. Green, Wyatt, Horn. They come up, so Clemson shows you that they can take it uh, in the air as well as back round. Jeff Save will kick it away. Derek Stegall has gone back with Charlie Rogers to receive the kick. Trying to keep it away from Stiegel and pin him up against the sidelines. Picked it up and tries to find running room, but it was nothing but orange-shirted Tigers back at the 16-yard line. O.J. Childress leading the charge. First Union presents around the ACC. Wake Forest to Duke in about an hour. Maryland and Louisville later this afternoon in the big battle at Charlottesville this Thursday night. Florida State in Virginia. 
The Wake Forest Blue Devil game will match the top tackler in the conference, Tucker Grace of the Demon Deacons. And Spence Fisher, second all time in the ACC, he has passed for over 8,000 yards. Donnie Davis, third possession for the Yellow Jackets. Gives it off to C.J. Williams, and he gets a couple to about the 18-yard line. Doc Walker mentioned the good passing of the sophomore Neilon Green from Yonkers, New York. Four of six in the game so far, Doc, and he is 70% on the year on the road. Can you believe that? Hey, Amen. Death Valley. A lot of high expectations, man. People love their football, and... This kid's going to be okay. But right now, Coach, what they're trying to get accomplished with him right now is just to settle down and don't make a mistake with the football. That was Rick Stockstill, one of the offensive coordinators, talking to Neilan. Here's C.J. Williams and that great team speed of the Clemson Tigers to the fore right there, led by their great freshman linebacker, Anthony Simmons. What a stud. Super Prep All-American. He's just out of Spartanburg High School, and it's amazing that a kid this young has a, is fundamentally as sound as he is. I mean, he does overrun plays, gets there just the nick, and if he hits you, you're going down. Well, Spartanburg High, perennially one of the great teams in the state of South Carolina in the national rankings again this year. Third down as Davis rolls, pressure on, has a man and has a first down. Derek Stiegel out of the 28-yard line. Stiegel, the big play man for the Yellow Jackets passing game, keeps the drive going. You'll know, see a lot of passing out on the edge, a lot of dash technique. There you got four Tigers in your frame. Davis is able to work out, get those shoulders squared up, and, and throw a strike. You're going to watch Tech, though. They're going to get back on the ground, Tech. They've got to accept the challenge. They're going to run that football, give that offensive line a chance to really exert itself, slow down this Tiger defense. Uh, Maryland threw the ball entirely too much last week and I, I guarantee you, you're going to see more balance with Tech. Chris Myers the tight end in motion. Bootleg away from the and Myers is wide open with Zachary in front of him fumbled the football but it bounced right back to him at the 47 yard line Anthony Simmons on the stop but it's another Georgia Tech first down. Boy, Chris segment. Simmons first catch of the year. <laughs> That's something. Isn't that something? Those tight ends don't get a lot of balls here at Tech. This is one he'll remember. And he'll also thank Cedric Zachary right there. You know, not a lot, but it all helps. Love to see the tight ends with the football. Well, Lance Thompson, the tight end coach, is going to tell uh, Chris about ball security, I think, at the meeting tomorrow. Oh, he'll never get another pass. Williams trying to cut inside of Myers gets it into Clemson territory Patrick Sapp on the stop also there was Raymond White the sophomore defensive end good offensive teams are able to go in and douse the fire once you score on their group they're able to come down there and hold the ball kind of diffuse the emotion of the Clemson Tigers and work it back their way we're done with the first quarter here in Atlanta, Georgia. Clemson with a long drive as a four-point lead after 15 minutes. Welcome back to Atlanta, Doc Walker, Mike Hogwood, and yours truly, Jack Corgan. Clemson leading Georgia Tech by four. Georgia Tech has the football, second down and seven, just into Clemson territory as we start the second quarter. Showing blitz with Sapp on the line of scrimmage. Davis checked off but forgot something. The football. Michael Cheever never snapped it, and it'll cost the Yellow Jackets five. And yeah, they had confusion when they broke the huddle. Head ball, false start, offense, five yard penalty, second down. First penalty of the ball game against the Yellow Jackets. Let's take a look at our Lee Apparel first quarter stats, and you can see uh, Clemson thanks to that. 65 yard drive with the edge in total offense. Georgia Tech had the advantage in terms of field position, but didn't take advantage of it. Had an excellent Look at the time of possession. It comes in with the big drive. Good football game. The penalty makes it second and 12 for Tech. Davis, good protection, goes out in the flat trying to find Harvey Middleton but he couldn't get away from Brian Dawkins. It's just a couple of yards on the play, and it'll set up a third and long. 
thing that both teams have defensively that that's exceptional is that team pursuit. They're going to get in the vicinity of the football. You better believe that. And if the first guy does not get you, then his buddies will. And see, that's what you want. You want to see those orange shirts get in there. Six guys there around the football. And then Mr. Dawkins, <laughs> legitimate guy. I mean, this guy will knock you out. He can cover with you. One of those special athletes. Williams a lone setback. He picked up the blitzing linebacker. And Donnie Davis picked up Derek Stiegel for a first down. Blocked by Williams enabled Davis to have the time to find Stiegel. You like a back that's averaging 121 yards a game to be unselfish. And see, there he goes, right there on your screen. Goes down and cuts the back, is able to take him off, allow his quarterback to have a little time to work it out. Donnie Davis, four for four on the afternoon. And Georgia Tech on the move. Myers again is the slot back in motion. And they give it to Williams, but Patrick Sapp and Raymond White got him in the backfield. That's Sapp. <laughs> Imagine this guy played quarterback. Tell you what, Michael Minter went to pull, and Raymond White just filled the hole. There was nothing there. Again, we were just, this is a clinic on both sides. Tech's defense, Clemson's defense. This is an old-fashioned slug pad. This guy right here is unreal. There you look at his numbers, two picks, couple of sacks. Getting better every week yes, in his first year as a linebacker. He might play some more football after this year at a different position. Yeah. Davis again changing the play. A huddle clock down to one. He just beat it. Has time. Now dumps it to Williams in the flat. Williams picks up a blocker and gets good yardage. Derek Stegall. What a hit on Andy McCrory. Yeah, that'll wake you up. That gets the crowd into it. Unless your fellows know the offensive linemen love that. But they were they had a great pass pro up front. I mean, Davis has an opportunity to figure out what he's going to eat after the game today, whether or not he's going to see a new flick. I mean, he had all day in the world. Then you drop off to CJ, watch the block. Deep and bam, right in there. See, that's good. That is nice. McCory doesn't really like it, but that's football. That's good football. Third and two, thanks to the catch and run and the block by Derek Stegall. Davis gives it to Williams on the edge, and he is stacked up by Brett Williams. And it's decision time again for George O'Leary. And without hesitation, he sends David Frakes' his field goal team on to try and narrow the margin of. Yeah, he broke this down right at the edge. I mean, that's it. He broke a double team. He took two tight ends and split them in half. And that's not, you draw that up, you figure two on one, you at least got to get a stalemate. That's a great defensive play. Frakes trying his second straight 46 yard field goal attempt. Out of the hold of Stallworth. Does he have enough leg? No. So Clemson will get the ball with pretty good field position after Georgia Tech's drive stalls. 11.59 to play in the first half. Clemson by four. Dave Frakes had hit a 46 yarder into the wind, but this time with the breeze at his back, he left it short and left. Brett Williams, linebacker for Clemson, is responsible for that. He had a well of a play on third down. First down, Raymond Priester is at a quiet first half. Gets out over the 30 yard line. Jimmy Clements on the stop. We talked about Clemson being outscored. In the first period this year, they have outscored the opposition by 39 points in the second quarter. This is their first possession of period two. Let's see how they go after their 65 yard drive the last time they had the football. That's a good sign for an offense to put up some points and then go into halftime. They just got to learn how to finish better. Emory Smith right behind Dwayne Morgan. Runs into the arms of Ralph Hughes, a couple of yards shy of a first down. You know, Dwayne Morgan, fresh legs. He got hurt against Georgia. Then against Maryland, Robert Jackson filled, filled in and played great. Boy, this big guy, 310 pounds, out the grip of Georgia. A little homecoming to sort for him, and he is rared up. I mean, he is rumbling. 
Now they have put Jackson now back into the ball game. They go from 310 to 330. I like those numbers. Option. Priester had trouble with the handle, but had enough forward momentum to drive through Ron Rogers and be close to the first down. Well, they look and decide whether or not it is a first down, and Michael Dover's going to ask for the chains. Elsewhere, Big Ten play, Penn State with the advantage at home against the Hoosiers. And this game, they might need calculators to keep track of that score, Tennessee and South Carolina. Michigan State under Nick Saban starting to play pretty good football in his first season as the head coach of the Spartans. And you know Wisconsin is angry. Yes. At the spanking they took a week ago. Raymond Priester moves the chains and it's first down Clemson. Clemson trying to change habit in this their eighth game of the year. They have won every odd numbered game and lost every even numbered game. But road wins still favor them. That's right. They have a chance this year to have more road wins than home wins for the first time in over 30 years. Green going deep for Wyatt. Antoine Wyatt. Touchdown, Clemson. 61 yards. He beat Ryan Stewart deep down the middle. It's a byproduct of number 18, Emory Smith, and his commitment and his power inside. If you pound it hard enough, good things happen, and that's exactly what you get. There's no way in the world you get a guy with Wyatt's reputation running downfield unless Stewart and those safeties are looking inside for the run. Sauve's conversion down the middle. Clemson strikes quickly this time. Neilan Green with his longest pass this season. Clemson up by 11. We talked a lot about the importance of establishing the fullback. Emory Smith watched the fake. Now watch the pickup on Derek Shepard right there. Rydell helmet right in his chest. That allows more time. Roundtree, the right guard. Great protection, throw and catch. Clemson on the board, 14-3. Longest play in two seasons for the Clemson offense. 61-yard strike from Green to Antoine Wyatt. Jeff Sauve boots it away for the Tigers. Derek Stegall drifts into the end zone, and the Yellow Jackets will have to start at their own 20-yard line. Doc Walker talked about the need for Clemson to maintain its ground game, which it has done so far this afternoon, but also what Tommy West promised when he took over the Clemson football program, Doc, that they would become a better balanced team. Yeah. They've done that beautifully this afternoon. He's got to pinch himself, knock on wood, kick a window pane out, whatever it takes, because Nelon Green, you know, I might think that Solomon's performance last week against Maryland may have scared Green a little bit. Juice Nelon up a little bit. <laughs> Donnie Davis trying to fire up his Georgia Tech team. And he'll throw it on first down. Nearly picked off by Patrick Sapp, and then a late flag in the backfield. Patrick Sapp, who had an interception last week, nearly had another. And we've got a holding call against Georgia Tech. They have a little cloth yanked down on this one. Davis again with his first drop back. Get that offensive line, do a pretty good job. We don't see it there, boy, Sapp. What an athlete. Holding offense. Half the distance penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. We watched. Sap last week run Brian Cummins down. Brian Cummins, Maryland quarterback, can scoot. I mean, he's a great athlete. And this kid really impressed me, stripping the ball, going after it. Patrick Sap, a great future at 6'4, 245 pounds, and he has instinct to play this game. Well, when you were used, used to be the target, and now you're the pursuer. Man, that's right. Rather be the hit tar than the hit team. First and long for Donnie Davis now inside his 10. It's a quarterback draw with lots of room. Donnie Davis gets it out to the 22-yard line. Hopefully a play to spark them. Mike Hogwood talked before the ball game about 
trying to rebound from the Florida State loss a week ago. Mike, do you have a sense of what's going on down there on that Georgia Tech bench? You get a sense that they're really a little bit flat, not a lot of emotion, which is surprising considering the crowd here today. It's a packed house at Bobby Dodd Stadium, but Clemson's taking the crowd pretty much out of this game right now. Davis got it out to the 22 to make it second and eight. Play action avoids the rush, has more room again. Dives out to the 27-yard line. The leading quarterback, Brown Gainer, in the conference on his own has gotten Georgia Tech close to a first down. Well, you can average 4.2 and have to take sacks. Fournay, who's just played so well for the Tigers as of late, he was a thorn in Maryland's side. And he's able to elude that. And again, he had that quarterback draw against Carolina a couple of weeks ago that was a huge play. 27 yards for Donnie Davis. He's their leading ground gainer here. Another big third down play. Third downs have not gone well for the Yellow Jackets. Forney nearly jumped off sides. Again, the play action fake. Downfield for Stegall. Broken up nicely by Dexter McLeon. Again, that didn't fake anybody out. And they were hoping to try to sneak him by there. McLeon played that one like he was the wide receiver. Again, let's check and see what kind of play fake do we get? Oh, he's kind of high from our angle. It looks great. But that secondary well school film studies. They never ever hurt you. I think they just played that out. That was just good. Good call. Good defense. And you wonder with the freshman tailback if they didn't really respect the fact that he might get the football. Yep. Rodney Williams the freshman punter. Bangs one towards Wyatt that takes a Clemson bounce and the Tigers will have excellent field position at their own 44 yard line. Next week it's going to be tough for Clemson because they're back home where they have struggled a little more in the conference anyway but this is always a huge game. The Tar Heels will come across the border and venture into Death Valley. 12 o'clock kickoff. Check your local listings for the station in your area. Coming off a of bye to Carolina. Some fresh legs. They get a chance to get back and work on the basics. And again, a young team, just so talented and uh, still with a shot to make it to a big bogey. Elon Green, five of seven for 104 yards, and he's going to put it up again. And he has another man, Joe Woods. It'll be first down Clemson at the 42 yard line of Georgia Tech. Hey, Green's after Canal's record now. I mean, he's a thrower. You, know, you get some confidence, you hit a big one. Man, you feel like you can do no wrong. That's a great throw going to your left. Having to try to square those shoulders up. And again, Wood showed us he got some stick up on his fingers. He's gone up now, caught, made two nice catches. Wyatt and Hinton to the right of Green as they go back to the fullback, Emery Smith. Tough yardage down to about the 38 yard line. Keith Brooking there for Georgia Tech. Back down to the field, Mike Hogwood. You know, Jack, some guys are really gamers. In pregame warnouts, Neilon Green was really limping around out here. Clyde Christensen told me that they were probably going to have to run Louis Solomon some, at least in the first half. <laughs> but when that whistle blew, Neilon was ready to go. He's on a roll. Got those Carlos Baerga ankles. He's going to play anyway. <laughs> Priester, good cutback. Priester inside the 30. First down, Clemson. Raymond Priester, the sophomore from Allendale, South Carolina, finally taken down by Gary Joseph. Man, that is an exceptional bit of running. I mean, this is Georgia Tech you're running at, folks. They don't give it up. I mean, you watch it. See, they're in a position to make plays. There's Brooke, and they are there. And he cuts it right back. And again, you keep those hats on hat. What happens is that Clemson never gave up. And all offensive linemen stayed aggressive. Toss to Priester again. Slipped a little bit. Jesse Tarplin there to make the stop down near the 25-yard line. Factor here, though, Doc, has got to be the amount of time this Georgia Tech defense has been on the field in the first half. Having to deal with number 18, Emory Smith, this battering ram. Not only does he hurt you with the ball and watch the block. See, you see, this is picture perfect. He drives the hips right through it. Keeps going. Sometimes you get two and he gets a double on that one. That's a double milkshake block for Emory Smith. Get those hips to rotate like rotate that. Rotate those hips, baby. Second and seven. Green on the option will keep it himself. Keith Brooking is there again. 
Brooking and Rogers, the two sophomore linebackers, came into this game tied for fourth in the conference. They each had 77 tackles on the year. That's amazing. 150 tackles out of your two middle linebackers in seven ball games. A couple weeks ago, they both had 53. You know, these two guys are going at it. I love that, that competition between two teammates. Brookings and Robert Rogers in the Carolina game with a great interception and coverage to win it for the Yellow Jackets. Third and four. Green against the blitz, steps outside of it, and finds Wyatt. Antoine Wyatt, the big play man for the Tigers, has another Clemson first down. Clinic. <laughs> Some of these shots, folks, will be they'll, they'll be in Clemson football training reels. Again, you roll into your left, the right-hander squares up. Now watch this. Nobody's coaching that, folks. This guy, that's in, that's in his bloodstream. Watch him get up. Man, that's just pure athleticism. Played some tailback last year, but has finally got the rhythm going with Neilon Green. And speaking of rhythm, there's a dancing Raymond Priester down to the 10-yard line. You Nick about, Ferguson on the stop. Pardon me, you talked about Tommy West, his commitment to get back and balance this offense out. He couldn't ask for anything more. You roll out, you got an option, you run inside, you give the give to the fullback, then you run option, then you come out on a circle. On a circle. Now watch this again. It's Bundren once again, 79, keeping that pressure on the defense. Great footwork up front. Bundren, the redshirt sophomore from Wilmington, Delaware, is really starting to come on at left tackle's plan. Priester again behind Bundren, but an outstanding play by Jimmy Clements. He waffled Tony Horn, the blocker, and made the hit. Well, somebody's got to step up for the Jackets. Again, you know, not number one in run defense by accident. See, that's just physical. That's a physical mismatch. You cannot have a wide receiver on a linebacker, on a real football player. No stretch of the imagination. He crushed it. You watch inside. See, helmet right at the right side. Good placement. It's good defense. And this man likes that. O'Leary coaches, coaches some defense. Well, with a third down situation, Clemson decided to use the first of its timeouts with 448 to play. Here's the scenario. This is the ninth third down play of the ball game for Clemson. On their first eight, they failed three times on runs and succeeded five times on passes. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? And well, you're in that third and middle kind of call here, Doc Walker. Feed 18. And take a look. I think they got to ride that mesh, that sweet spot, a little harder with Green and Smith. Make a read and get out there and thread the edge. I mean, they've been so successful on that. See, Rick Stock still the co offensive coordinator. Clyde Christensen, the other one upstairs. The bowl situation as we move into the latter stages of this 95 campaign, and you can see what these two teams are playing for right now. Second or third place is a very attractive bowl, and so is the fourth place bowl yeah. as well with Carquest. So you want to stay in the upper reaches of this conference, and right now these two teams are in the hunt. The important thing to remember, both are four and three, but both have a victory against a one double eight team. So they have to win three of their final four games to have the required seven victories, six 1A victories, in order to get into a bowl game. Uh, this is a dogfight. From this point on, I mean, it's all strength. You're going to see a brutal brand of football. Third and five at the Georgia Tech 12. Clemson leading 14 to three. Green on the run. To the end zone. Wyatt, touchdown. Neilon Green, what a ball game he is having with Antoine Wyatt. All I can say, Jack Gorgon, key breakers. If you're tech, I mean, how do you prepare for this? How do you think this is going to happen to you? My goodness. This young man is smoking. That ball is right where it ought to be. If not, it's tipped or picked up. That's good defense. Wyatt has caught five balls for 99 yards and two touchdowns here in the first half. Jeff Sauve makes it 21 to 3 Clemson. Stunning this capacity crowd here at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Back with more in Atlanta after this. Oh 
Tommy West, and well, that's Clyde Christensen on the phone telling Nealon Green the rest of the year, whether you know it or not, the games are on the road, Nealon. Just consider it that way. You know, and this is so nice to see if you're a Clemson fan, a nightmare if you're for Tech. Poor Ryan Stewart has been put in a box. He's such a good safety, and he's so involved on the run. Now he's caught in a quandary. What does he do? Does he, he's got to respect play action. Then he's got to take the deep thirds. And so far, they've been working on Ryan Stewart, the safeties at Tech. And, uh, I mean, it's just working. Good execution at this point is beating good defense. And right now, the 18-point deficit forces Pat Watson, the offensive coordinator for George O'Leary, to think about changing their approach. They will have to get away from the ground control offense they want to play. But not too soon. Still got some time. And they've got to score. This possession is huge. But they've also got to get back to CJ. You get here with the horse. You don't take the saddle off of him just because it's a sunny day. The breeze lets Save kick it through the end zone. Georgia Tech will have it at its own 20 with 443 to play in the first half. And what's coming up at halftime? Well, our expert Mike Hogwood tells us that it will be what? Well, it will be, of course, our Ice House Player of the Week. And this is the Olympic Village for next summer. We'll be talking with the mayor of the Olympic Village, have our regular ACC stats. I might make a note, Jack, the wind has really picked up in the last couple of minutes. Tech is going into a strong, strong breeze right now. Adds to the problems for Donnie Davis. C.J. Williams back into the ball game at tailback for Georgia Tech. Option Davis for just a couple. Mon Wilson, who is in the ball game at middle linebacker, trailing the play, made the stop, and it's a short game. Another one of those 235-pound guys that can run. Again, doesn't give you a lot on the fullback feed, and that's just. I mean, how do you how do you get around that? You get five Tigers on the play. Great lateral quickness, pursuit. We saw it last week against Maryland. I don't think you're going to get outside on the edge and hurt these guys. We have yet to see Wiley, the fullback, get involved in the running game. Davis rolls outside and finds, oh, Derek Stiegel looking for the sideline, forgot to secure the football. Well, that's a classic case there where you want it so bad, you're starting to press. Starting to feel a little of the pressure, being down, being here at home, homecoming, and you just have to relax and forget about the score because you got plenty of time. Georgia Tech, two of six on third down here in the first half. Below their seasonal average, they will have three wide receivers in the ball game. Williams, the lone setback. Clemson with pressure on Davis. He avoids it. Looking for some place to throw the football. Steps away from Simmons. Fires and gets his man, Harvey Middleton. First down, Georgia Tech. Great play by Donnie Davis. Lamarick Simpson comes up hobbling for Georgia Tech. Or for Clemson, excuse me. And what a play. What a play. And you're going out, you got a counter speed and quickness and athleticism with just about the same dose. Here Davis gets away, and here you think he's just going to be knocked out. Here you got Simmons coming in, he eludes him, and then finds an open receiver, makes a big play. Three and a half to play. 21 3 Clemson. Play action. Davis with time, threw it behind Grant Bainham. How often Felt the see? presence of Raymond White. How often do you see that? A guy makes a miraculous play to elude three or four defenders and get open and throw across his body for a first down. And then you come back and you have a simple drop back and you have a receiver wide open and you can't hit him. And I think Tech right now just had to settle down. Just settle down and get back to it. I mean, you don't become a bad football team all in one series. Raymond White. The sophomore from Clinton, Mississippi, had been putting the pressure on Davis on that play. Again, the play action fake. Protection. They come right back to the same play, and Bainham has a first down. Good job. I like to see Good coordinators ball. double up yeah. sometimes. Yeah. You know, often they try to outfake the defense. That time, Pat Watson and company, they come back and say, hey, it was open. Let's just execute. And sure enough, you get it. You get a linebackers now jumping in. Clemson's going for the throw, going for the kill. Georgia Tech converts. Well, this Georgia Tech offense 
has the advantage of a coordinator upstairs Eddie Wilson and the coordinator downstairs Pat Watson much like Clemson does with Christensen and Stockstill option to the short side they get it to Williams but no room to operate Patrick Sapp was the guy who really fouled up the mesh as Williams went out of bounds at the 49. Yeah when you run on the tight sidelines you can afford defensively uh, to, to give that up and to press on the on the lead fullback a little more. Well, Doc, you talked about the great team speed of Clemson. Because of that, when you run the option, you really end up having to run it short side because you go wide side, they're going to run you down. In trouble. No, I still believe they got to go between the tackles. And they've got the back, and C.J. Williams is capable of doing it. But much like Clemson, you're going to have to have a few bad plays, but commit to it. Second and seven, Davis on the roll again. Here comes that pressure, and down he goes. Anthony Simmons and Andy McCrory back at the 41-yard line. Like he was shot out of a cannon, the freshman from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Picks up sack number two on the year. See, speed kills, and that's an example of it. You got him once, but you're not going to get him twice. They come in waves. That's just the orange wave coming at you. A loss of eight on the play. It'll make it third and 15. Block moving with 240 to play in the first half. Simmons with six tackles today, 87 on the season. Freshman. <laughs> Davis in trouble, and down he goes. Adrian Dingle, the outside linebacker. Boy, Dingle and Williams have given them tremendous production from that spot. Now this is just Tigers just swelled up. They accepted the challenge. That defensive line just kept going. See this Forney again just crawling, trying to make a sack, putting pressure on the quarterback. That's good team defense. Dingle, another true freshman. No, it's just out of Holly Hill, South Carolina. Rodney Williams will kick it away for Georgia Tech. Good kick this time. Wyatt calls for the fair catch and makes it inside his 20. 146 to play here with Clemson up 21 to 3. This is just one of a number of things going on here today. They had the annual homecoming parade. I have no idea what that is supposed to represent, but you get all these engineers making their own little designs. Of course, game six of the Braves and the Indians at Fulton County, the Cowboys and the Falcons tomorrow. You got Halloween weekend. You think there's anything to do today, Doc? Who do you like in the Indians Brave matchup? Uh, I take the Fifth Amendment, thank you very much. <laughs> Emory Smith on first down, lugs the ball forward to the 25 yard line, carrying Al Jackson along the way. See, this is the, the way you like to start off on first down with an offense. Low, you know, high percentage success. Then here's a guy who's hit two yards after he gets the ball and picks up what, six yards. They six have yards. done a good job of keeping Ron Rogers' name from being called too often here in the first half. Well, Carlos, we talked about Al Jackson. Al Jackson's been playing well, but you can only take it so long. Priester. This time ran into Ron Rogers and gets stopped shy of the first down with help from Al Jackson again. I don't think uh, Ron really appreciated you mentioning that he wasn't in on a play, so he, he just got trying back to, in on it. Just trying to spark his interest, that's yeah, he, all. He got back in on it. Hey, the good ones, you're never going to keep them down for two straight plays. They're going to find a way. See, he squares up fundamentally both teams real sound. You can tell they're well coached. Georgia Tech using its first timeout on a third and two situation. They will get the ball to start the second half after winning the toss and deferring. Rogers hit so hard the decal the GT is off. He knocked it off on one side. Now they have that little uh, Pittsburgh Steelers look. It's only on one side there, partner. No, no, he got it knocked off. <laughs> you can tell those guys, you know, those decals, equipment men, they know the real hitters. Guys have to have a lot of maintenance on their helmets. That's a good look. See, he likes that. He knew we'd pick up on that. Yes. Yeah, I just use one, thank you. Just give me one. George O'Leary has, I think, done an excellent job in reinvigorating the football spirit of this program. He knows that it's not going to happen 
all at once. He has played 15 true freshmen this year. And gets another solid recruiting class and gets himself going again. Look what they have done to C.J. Williams at Clemson defense today. Really, the Clemson offense has been a fumble as Priester lost it, but it bounced back to him. He'll be shy of the first down, however. I believe they'll take a look to make sure. Now that's a bad sign for Tech because there's your break right off the knee. And Jimmy can't get to it. I mean, that's when you need people swarming to the football, crawling, doing whatever it takes. That was the play Tech needed. Tech uses its second timeout. They'll have 44 seconds remaining. Unfortunately, that strong breeze is to the back of Chris McAnally, so he can get Georgia Tech backed up pretty well unless Nathan Perryman or whomever they're going to send back can return the punt a long way. Clemson with better than 100 more yards. Excuse me, better than 100 more yards of total offense than the Yellow Jackets in the first half. Been great offense. Coach West now just thinking, man, if I could just get that clock to speed up a little bit, we could take it on back to Clemson. I'd be a happy camper. McAnally will kick it away towards Nathan Perriman. Perriman standing back near his 35 yard line. Tech with 10 men on the line of scrimmage, and they're coming. Down goes McAnally, but it was acting rather than contact. Perriman, it's one against the bunch, and he got it back to the 36-yard line. The bunch was headed up by Kelton Dunnigan. A fly comes at the end of the play. Do you ever run the punts back? Yes. I mean, that's got to be the scariest feeling in the world when you got a block on and you know you don't have a lot of help and you don't fair catch it. What are you, what's going through your mind? You secure the football and run a straight line. <laughs> the flag is going against the Yellow Jackets, an illegal block in the back. This is the near contact, but no foul. Yeah, this is from the School of Acting. Oh, nice. Now, kick the leg a little bit. And here's Jack Corrigan in his youth. What do you do there, Jack? You catch the ball and you say, oh, my. <laughs> a half minute and change remaining on the game clock as Donnie Davis will try and get something to happen. Hey, we got plenty of time. We watched last year. That's right, and it gives Merrill on the final play of the first half. C.J. Williams, I don't know if he thought it was for him or not. The ball came right at him, and he couldn't make the play. I think Mike Hogwood said it best. This team right now does not appear to be emotionally in sync with this ball game. Really, the significance in this ball game. So here's a guy that's going after the ball like he's in no man's land, and he's an excellent athlete. You know that something's off kilter. Maybe they do need to get in at halftime and reassess this thing. Looked like he never even picked up that ball until very late. Coming out of the shadow of the glare, yeah. end, into the point. glare. And now they line up in their eye formation, send Williams in motion. And Davis will run the quarterback draw. Donnie Davis gets it to the outside to the 34-yard line. He'll be two yards shy of the first down. Chris Jones and Liam on Evans on the hit. Wiley would have put a good block. When is he going to get a carry? Time running down. This could be the final play of the first half unless they get it to the sidelines. Davis has to throw it away with one second to play in the first half. It appeared like he had Zachary open. Maybe there is a glare. Maybe there's a problem on that side of the field. Maybe Mike Hogwood can give us a little insight on that because it looked like he was wide open. Donnie Davis has had a pretty good first half, but not much help from his friends so far as the Yellow Jackets, after an early field goal to take a three to nothing lead, have not really done much when they've had the football. They've missed the field goal. And now they'll air it out with Stiegel and Middleton left and Zachary right. Now they'll give it to Wiley, his first carry of the football game to end the first half. Well, maybe to set him up for the second half. 30 minutes of great football for the Clemson Tigers, particularly quarterback Neilon Green in the first half as they lead it 21 to 3. 
Tommy West however knows that George O'Leary will have his team ready to go for the second half. Mike Hogwood is looking for Coach West to get some first half comments. Let's go down to the field where Mike has Clemson head coach Tommy West. First of all, the offense up top, Neilon Green to Antoine White. So far, that's working great. Well, we've hit a couple of big plays on them, which are good plays by our people. We, the big, I tell you, the wind's a factor again this week. And when we had to win, we tried to throw the ball some with it. All right, when you got a 21 to 3, you're playing great. What do you tell these guys at halftime to, to keep going and keep playing this? Don't let them score any points. <laughs> that would help us right yeah. now. Now, we just got to keep doing what we're doing. Our offensive line's got to pick up the tempo a little bit. I thought right there, there's no reason for us not to get a first and, and be able to get out of the half. But, but we got to do the same things we were doing. All right, let's get to the locker room. Thank Tommy you. West. His Clemson Tigers out in front right now with Georgia Tech, 21 to 3. Back with our halftime from Atlanta in just a moment. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by your neighborhood Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to try Exxon gasolines with the power to drive down maintenance costs. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. By your Carolina Ford dealer, home of five of America's top ten selling vehicles. By Winn-Dixie, the low price leader. And by Ice Brewed Ice House. Ice Brewed, so there's never any watered-down taste. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, proud corporate partner of ACC football. Exxon, rely on the tiger. By Lee Apparel, with new styles and colors, you'll like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By your Carolina Jeep and Eagle dealer, by Continental Airlines, the official airline of the ACC, flying to more than 160 destinations worldwide. By Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. By your hometown Carolina Dodge dealer and the new Dodge. By Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. And by your friends at Toyota. For quality and value that's simply the best, see your local Toyota dealer today. Georgia Tech's four-game home winning streak in jeopardy halfway through this one as they trail at halftime in the homecoming game 21 to 3 to the Clemson Tigers. Mike Hogwood caught up with George O'Leary, the Yellow Jackets head coach, as he came out of the locker room just a few moments ago. George, what do you tell the guys in the locker room? What you guys do here? Well, we better start blocking and tackling. I tell you, Clemson's out playing us right now, and uh, that's the indication of the score, and that's what it should be the way we play. Specifically, anything you're going to change? Anything you're going to do here? Well, we just got to start blocking people. We got to change some things on defense a little bit. I, I thought they're outmanning us a little bit out there, so we made some changes there. But otherwise, our guys got to get out and start playing. All right. Just George O'Leary, Jack. Well, one thing about George, Doug, you know exactly where he's coming from. He and Tommy West are two of the refreshing guys in the coaching profession because they're very upright with their players and they're very upright with the media they, they don't beat around and they don't uh, give you any evasion they let you know that's why they recruit well because kids can sense that parents can sense that and uh, you know if you know the game you can see it he, he realized that and uh, I think they're going to come back and have a strong showing in the second half they have yet to taste defeat here at home and that's uh, that says a lot. Derek Stegall and Charlie Rogers will await the kickoff of Jeff Save. Clemson taking the wind here in the third quarter. The breeze, which was not that strong at the start of the game, has at times been gusting at 20 to 25 miles per hour, like Tommy West said at the end of the first half. The wind a bigger factor than they thought last week at Maryland, and again here this afternoon. As Sauve's kick again sails out of the end zone. Georgia Tech started the ball game with pretty good field position on their early drives, but for the most part, not able to do much with it. And you can see how they really had only one play that generated a lot of activity for him. Or one drive, yeah, excuse quarterback me. draw. Yeah, one play, you're That's right. the biggest play. 
Wiley and Williams and it's Williams who gets the call and good blocking up front for a solid five before Andy McCrory stopped him. Ken Salaj and Jason Dukes on the right side with some good blocking. You can say what you want to say about blocking but it still has to go with running straight ahead. See that's a commitment there. So you see Dukes and company big big face up blocks the full back gets a little tag and Duke where he's still driving guys downfield. That's what it takes. It's Mel Bowers rather than Wiley starting at fullback here in the second half to try and help the lead blocking situation. Wiley again, or uh, Williams again, out close to first down yardage. You'll be about a yard and a half shy. Raymond White and Andy McCrory. Well, Doc, they listen to what you harped about in the first half and they're trying to reestablish something here to begin the second half but they got to pick it up here on third down. Yeah I think they just scouted themselves well they got in the halftime and said this is what we do this is what we didn't do CJ's under his rush total let's get back to basics. They got eight men in the box nine men in the box right now and they go wide and Williams lost the handle on it and is going to lose yardage back to the 25 yard line. They might have had the perimeter but C.J. Williams took his eye off the pitch and fumbled it. Yeah. Self-inflicted wound on this one. You come out with two good attitude plays then you go in here with the toss and it's there for the one of the few times I can say against Clemson it is there. It's not there if you don't hold on to the football. Great camera work you could see Williams turn his head before he had the football put away. Over anxious. You want to make a big play so bad, you make a bad one. Rodney Williams kicked angles. And the ball might have deflected off of a Clemson player. Ooh. But it was not picked up by anybody from Georgia Tech. It was very close to hitting Speedy Watson. There's a you know the, the guy back return man it's his obligation to put out a sound a, you know ba a belly call anything to get you away from that as you block because you can't see it. Good string there in the middle portion of the first half for Nelon Green as they had three consecutive touchdown drives and he has good field position at the 43 yard line to start his first third quarter drive. Wide in motion they toss it to Priester trying to get to the outside and he can't quite do it. Good job of stringing the play out. Yellow Jacket fans thought the spot was a little generous. Stewart and Perryman chased Priester out of bounds. Well again both the defensive units are just so well coached and so active that you see D getting up from the safety spot and, and there's Stewart. He's going to be there against the run. One of the reasons why they've taken advantage of the tech defense because of his aggressiveness and you don't want to change that. But I still say when you got Smith in your backfield give him the ball. Give Priester two 41 yards on the day. Green I don't know if this was a planned play or he just didn't connect with Emory Smith but he is thrown down right at the line of scrimmage by Al Jackson. Well, Smith, was, Smith was definitely open. It appears Jimmy Clements might be hurt 28 and you watch this. If Smith has the football on this maybe he picks up some yards but he never looked for the football. Big Robert Jackson is the man down for Clemson. You can see what's happened to that Georgia Tech rushing defense so far here today and you know that George O'Leary made a point of talking about that with his people. Larry knew the defensive line coach has done a terrific job with a young defensive oh, front. They love him too at Virginia. I talked to Ryan Keel, his all ACC down lineman uh, in Virginia, and they just talk about Larry and how he helped them and what a great coach uh, that he was for the Cavaliers. And I guarantee you they're tickled to death to have him here in the, in the gold and white. It'll be third down and eight. Clemson's success on third down six times in the first half came through the air. Six of ten on third down. And Green will put it up again. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. Scrambling and has the first down. Nelon Green has been the difference in this ball game for the Clemson offense. Derek Shepard on the stop but not before the sophomore Cut. got the first down yardage. Davis does it for Tech. Green does it for the Tigers. You see this is great coverage in the secondary. There's nobody to get to. 
And then you watch him just have a feel for it. He never looked at the yard mark. He just had a feel for it. Now you see some pretty good matchups in the offensive line. And there Jackson thought he had a shot at it, couldn't get to it. Back to the live play, Emory Smith goes banging straight ahead. And while it looked for a moment like Georgia Tech's defense was gaining some ground, the scramble for the first down really deflated them, and Smith pounded at the soft middle. Yeah, it hurts you, but you know, you have to think that you still have a lot of time. Down 21 to 3 by 11.30 to go. Plenty of time, but you got to make a play defensively. If your offense is struggling, then you need your defense to strip the ball, pick the ball off, get some tackles for losses. Georgia Tech with 17 takeaways on the season, but not anything here today as Smith tries to fight for the first down. He is going to be close. Al Jackson and Ralph Hughes there. Starting, he was very physical in the first half. Now you're going to get some join. Then you watch Smith battering Ram. He goes right in the back of Flynn Roundtree. And the good backs do that. If you're not, if you're in their way, they run over you, officials, anybody. Seven of 11 on third down. Georgia Tech is just three of 10. Smith, their leading ground gainer with 54 yards. And he gets the first down. Rodgers and Jackson there for Georgia Tech, but move the chains again for the Tigers. And just as importantly, move that clock ahead. I still like to see Smith play some linebacker too. His guys, kids all American, played great at the linebacker spot in high school with his range and quickness, man. Uh, it's just good story for Clemson. Really was. Good story. Nine touchdowns make it ten now in the season with the touchdown in the first half for Emory Smith. He's a junior. Toss to Priester behind Smith. Flag flies right in the middle, which usually means a holding call. And that's what Michael Dover tells us, so that will negate a good run for Raymond Priester. I think our third holding penalty, a lot of runs in this game. Holding offense. Ten yard penalty, spot the foul, repeat first down. It's only the fifth penalty of the game in total. 10 16 to play here in the third quarter. Clemson, after trailing three to nothing, has been the dominant team. And they have really taken the crowd out of it. It was one of the keys that Mike Hogwood talked about in our pregame yes. show. Huge homecoming crowd has rarely been a factor in this one. Terrific play to stop what looked like a big gainer for Wyatt. He stripped the ball, but it bounced right to Glenn Roundtree. And it all starts with Nick Ferguson. He's the outside guy. 40 down the bottom of your screen. Boy, D, great play. There's Roundtree around the ball and makes it. Hey, this guy looks like a fullback. Ball goes right to the top. He's trying to actually get upfield. He's trying to break it, folks. <laughs> oh, I love to see Glenn with the football. Back to the 45. It's second and 22 from the shotgun. Draw play. Clements on the blitz hit Priester almost as soon as he got the ball. It'll be third and long. The Tech defense trying to get the crowd going. And they have cranked it up. They have cranked it up. Hey, you see Jimmy, he's going for the ball. He's going for the football. See, you see the white shirts starting out, number the orange shirts at the point of attack. Third and 20. You can see there has been very little to get these folks out of their seats for to this point. And that's been a factor for Clemson. Green on the move. Downfield for Wyatt. He's got it. Antoine Wyatt again. Man, what a throw. I mean, the margin of error on this was zilch. You talk about thread the needle. It appeared that Stewart was in great position. Again, rolling to his left. How about precision passing, folks? Man, and what a catch. 
as Jack Corrigan would coach his kids to say that they should get their hands down, create the cup, and let the ball work right in, keep it off the body, and make the grab. The missing thing, Coach? You got it all there, partner. What a combination, Green and Wyatt this afternoon. Georgia Tech stacks up the defense. Eight of 12 on third down. Seven through the air and the other one on the scramble. Following the near strip by D, this could be enough to knock him out. Six receptions, 120 yards, two scores, and we got a ton of time to play in this football game. So it's Antoine Wyatt over 500 yards on the season with 31 catches and four touchdowns in a run based offense. I've seen a lot. Second and nine. Bangs it inside the 15. He'll be about five yards shy of the first down. Keith Brooking and Al Jackson there for Georgia Tech. Now as a defender, you start to think maybe three but never seven because they've taken your best shot now and they're still standing. There's a lot of pride on this group. These jackets, I mean, they've been there. They understand how to play tough, tough football. Now I got to go back to your statement. Maybe the Florida State game took more out of them than we thought. Yeah, we thought they'd bounce back and just say, well, it was past him, but to this point, they have not. And then Neilon Green changes the cadence of his count and draws the Yellow Jackets offside. Neilon Green is just best game I've seen him play. Without question. In control, confident, making the big throws, running the offense, and leading. Michael Dover will officially Dead tell ball. us. Offsides, defense, five yard penalty, first down. Talk about that non rhythmic snap count. That's all cadence. And see that offensive lineman for them to sit in there for Trevor Putman to take that hit, you know, and not flinch. Well, Neilon Green first really burst onto the scene against Georgia Tech a year ago, but he did it with his legs. At 111 yards rushing in the 20 to 10 triumph last year, he has been Mr. Everything here this afternoon. Emory Smith, good hit by Ron Rogers as he stacks him up after just a short gain. Now keep in mind, now this is the 11th first and goal on the year for Clemson, and they have scored a touchdown 10 times. No, it's just strong. I mean, this is the kind of drive that you work. This is what training camp and spring football is all about. A consistent drive offensively, error free, and you score. Priester trying to find the corner. Good pursuit by Georgia Tech, and they stack him up. But Clemens didn't give up. He got hooked, and then he continued to pursue to the football. See, now they're fired up. See, I like that. There's Brooklyn. He's pumped up. Rogers just had a big hit on Emory Smith. So you see Jimmy, he's limping. He got hurt four plays ago, but he didn't dare come out because he can sense the importance of this. And they have really run off a lot of the clock. It's already down to five and a half to play here in the third quarter. The play for the Georgia Tech defense on third and goal. Green on the option. He gets to the five, and that's it. Al Jackson turned him back inside where Clements and Brooking wrapped him up. Turning point of the Tech season right now. This is what they're going to look back on and say, this is where we decided we were going to go to a bowl game, that we were going to take command of this, or we were going to fall back into the pack. Jeff Sauve will come on and attempt a 23-yard field goal. He is inside of 30 yards make it four of five as he puts that one through and Clemson extends its lead 447 to play here now hey hang on a second we've got a flag on the play I had a little John at the end of the play and that obviously would be tacked on after the after the play so it will go to the kickoff so we can step away 4.47 to play here in the third quarter. Clemson leading Georgia Tech. Personal foul is the call against Georgia Tech. They'll assess it on the kickoff. So when we return to Bobby Dodd Stadium, it will be Clemson 24, Georgia Tech 3.
Clemson leading it 24 to 3 as they have dominated the clock in this football game. That last drive, it was only 51 yards, but it was 15 plays and took better than eight minutes off the clock. And they now have an advantage of nearly eight minutes in terms of possession. You still have to credit the Tech defense for just yielding three. I mean, if they, if they give up seven in that, I think you can start rolling credits. With the 15-yard personal foul penalty, Jeff Sauve has the ball teed up right at midfield. The question is, will he chip it or just boom it out of the end zone with that stiff breeze at his back? Squibber. Nope. Took it through the end zone. And Georgia Tech will have it at its own 20-yard line. I don't understand that. Time out on the field, 4.47 to play here in the third quarter. Back after this word from your local ACC station. Back here at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, along with Doc Walker and Mike Hogg with Jack Corgan. Glad you could join us on a beautiful day here in Atlanta. But not many pretty things for the hometown team right now, trailing by three touchdowns. That's Middleton in motion as Davis will throw on first down. Steps up through the traffic and gets it out close to the 25 yard line where Raymond White is there again along with Chris Jones. Oh, Brett, Brett Williams once again. He's had an outstanding game. There he takes the jump, but why not? He got in there so early. See, they are scrapping once again. And Eric Bradford, he stepped up now the past couple of weeks and played, played some good football. And he really has. Yeah, Williams had a day. He's had a day. In his home state, is coming to play well too. In his home state from Albany, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Second and five. They run the counter play. Rogers trying to get outside, and Mon Wilson is there. Chris Jones also. Chris Jones, the freshman from Monroe, Georgia. Now you're just asking for trouble. You're asking for trouble. If you're going to get outside on the edge, these guys redirect and re-react so well. See, they get over the pile, they climb over garbage, they dive, they crawl, they do whatever it takes. You can't turn the corner on them. I have to go back and look at that Florida State film. Well, that misplayed toss sweep on their first third down of the second half by Georgia Tech didn't look like much now, but it has meant everything. Time of possession, attitude, pass to Bainham is broken up again by Chris Jones. And Georgia Tech has a three and out for its second possession of the third quarter. That's just not fair to your defense. I mean, that's just not fair. You're a yellow jacket, and you think it now defensively. My goodness, guys, give us a couple of first downs, even if you don't score. And this is when you get discouraged as a player. Second week in a row, it has been very frustrating for the Georgia Tech offense. Rodney Williams sending it towards Antoine Wyatt. Williams, good kick this time, particularly into the wind. Wyatt at the 32. Wyatt out near midfield. A return of 17 yards by Antoine Wyatt. A little conversation going on amongst the boys. <laughs> Just discussing, you know, a little educational uh, philosophy. Hey, you know, Wyatt, so impressive because he takes the ball and runs right down the gut. I mean, comes right down the barrel on you. Uh, explosive speed. 3.08 to play here in the third quarter. Antoine Wyatt and the Tigers are rolling. With the Tiger Rag playing in the background, it might be homecoming here in Atlanta, but it has been road sweet road for these Clemson Tigers as they try and make it four straight games away from the confines of Death Valley. Place is such an advantage for Clemson. Hard to believe that this has not worked for him so far. Neilan Green on first down gives it to Raymond Priester on the short side. And Priester finds the going tough. Keith Brooking, Jimmy Clemens, and company there to stop him after maybe a yard or so. I mean, Nick Ferguson also there. If you like defense, folks, this is just uh, been a smorgasbord for you because watch these guys. See, they just do it all well. It starts at the point of attack. 
Jimmy Clements, again, you know, you beat the lead blocker, and he still has the ability to get out and make the tackle. Now, that's saying a lot. Well, it's been tough today. There are only two seniors on that starting lineup for Georgia Tech defensively. Ryan Stewart and Nick Ferguson, so that defensive unit can only get better next year. Green going for it all to Tony Horn against Ferguson. Good recovery by Nick Ferguson to break it up at the five-yard line. And Nick got away with one on that one. Never found the football. He was just hoping. And, you know, the way things have been going for Tech, they got a bit of good luck. Oh, Green, man, he's just tossing that football around now like he's in a run and shoot. Well, look, if, that, if that ball's on the outside shoulder, that's where you want to have it. So technically, uh, he threw, threw the ball right into Ferguson's advantage. He read the eyes and turned the head yeah. just enough at the finish. And with the wind, too, that strains that ball in carry a little better. Screen pass set up. Priester with a blocker. Jackson in front of him. Good job by Mike D, however, to stop him shy of the first down. Yeah, good job by D. An excellent job by Ron Rogers. Again, Rogers didn't give up the flank. He allowed D to come in. And that D and Stewart, man, they got some safeties here at Tech. This kid makes some plays. But boy, if he could have had that strip, that fumble, had Roundtree not caught that football, they'd have been in good shape. Crowd reacted to the most positive thing they've had to root about so far. The good effort by the Georgia Tech defense. Don't forget the halftime show. That was pretty nice. Kevin Laird will punt the football. Redshirt freshman. His first chance to kick a ball here this afternoon. He must be the pooch specialist. But it still will bounce into the end zone. Yeah, the release men couldn't get down. Tech did a good job. Here's a look at this week's Burger King Top 10 Fan Poll, where you, the fan, votes for who's number one. And this week's number one team is the number one team in the country and in the ACC, the Florida State Seminoles. Ohio State has surpassed uh, Nebraska right now, Florida, and then Notre Dame. Tennessee winning big this afternoon. Michigan and Penn State and Northwestern, and Kansas in their battle with Kansas State this afternoon. Stop in at your local Burger King restaurant to find out how you can cast your vote for number one. You can tell us a fan poll. <laughs> Davis throwing on first down. Down the middle. That went through everybody. Let's see. You had Simmons. You had Middleton. You had McCrory at all with opportunities to get that football. Just the fact that you mentioned all those guys in orange shirts tells me something's wrong. The time is there. Hey, Maryland didn't have this kind of time last week. That offensive line is doing a good job. But you got to make decisions. See, that's dangerous. When you're trailing 24 to 3, I mean, it's not the time to get acrobatic with the football. Well, you can see Andy McCurry read the eyes of Donnie Davis and react to that pass. Second and 10. Davis again going down the middle. And the wind holds it up as he was trying to find Omar Cassidy. Had him. He was behind Leamon Evans, but that strong breeze just stood the ball up. Boy, he had him. He had him on that. Well, there are the Smith brothers. What a pro franchise would give to have that as a backfield. That's the day. Smith brothers as opposed to the Marx brothers <laughs> or Dr. Joyce brothers. <laughs> Georgia Tech just one out of seven of late on third down and three of 11 overall. Tigers show blitz, but they're just coming with four men. Davis flushed out of the pocket. Can he get to the stakes? He does. First down as he outruns Anthony Simmons out to the 33-yard line. He'll be a hero, even if it is a defeat, because he is definitely giving his all. Duke with a nice block on the outside and tackle. And here you see Davis do what Cummings, the Maryland Terrapins, weren't able to do a week ago. That is to make a play versus that pass rush. They were sending three guys against Maryland, which I haven't figured out yet why it worked. Davis with 43 yards on the ground, the leading ball carrier for the Yellow Jackets. That's not a positive sign most of the time. Here's Williams with some running room. Williams dragged down by Warren Forney. No, make that Tony Planton, who has the hit, the sophomore from Pendleton, South Carolina. That was a good push that time. Curtis McGee 
mentor, achievers. We've been talking about these guys. They haven't had a lot to hang their hat on today. C.J. Williams, but this time, you know, that was attitude. This is how you come off the football. This is what Coach was talking about at halftime when he talked to Hollywood. How he wanted to get his guys out blocking. Coach O'Leary wanted to see better blocking. So that was a good five-yard pickup for Williams. Blitz from Dingle. Davis runs around it and can't hook up with Derek Stegall. Out near midfield, Dexter McLeon on the coverage. 19 seconds remaining here in the third period. You know, when you're 20, up 24-3 and you play a corner, you can just you can gamble a little bit. You know, you can it just helps your confidence. And McLeon doesn't need doesn't lack lack of confidence. They play good though, they really are. Donnie Davis has not been able to connect on a pass here in the second half so far. 0 for 4. See the team recently that needed a bigger play. <laughs> the GT does right now. Third and five. Sap down like he's coming on the right side of Davis, and he does. Picked up by C.J. Williams for a moment, but not long enough. And Patrick Sap with his third quarterback sack of the season. On what will be probably the final play of the third quarter. I think where you see him down is where you might see him next year. Or so he makes his move to the National Football League. Just an imposing power. Goes up, takes the ball faked, and is able to stay down and make the play. It's not the final play of the third quarter because Tommy West wisely calls a timeout to force Georgia Tech to punt into that strong win. Good job of coaching and clock management by Tommy West. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Next weekend, we will be at Clemson Death Valley as they have their annual grudge battle with the North Carolina Tar Heels this time within the friendly confines, if you can call that friendly. Uh, friendly for who? <laughs> well, that's right. Uh, <laughs> Memorial Stadium in Death Valley. 12 o'clock to kick off. Check your local listings for the station in your area. Now Emmett Smith is going to head out and get himself ready for tomorrow afternoon's game with the Atlanta Falcons. Well, you know what happens. You can't stand up for two or three hours. I mean, that's worse than really jogging on the legs. So he's going to get off his feet. Couple of Super Bowl rings don't look too bad on them. No. Rodney Williams. Wyatt thought about fielding it. Now takes it on the bounce. Trying to get around to the corner. Antoine Wyatt with a blocker in front of him takes it back nearly to midfield. Boy, Antoine Wyatt has made big play upon big play here in the first half. Jesse Tartlin ran him out of bounds. But it has been a great three quarters for that young man and the guys dressed in orange. 15 minutes of football to play in Atlanta. Clemson in command. Twenty four three Clemson on top of Georgia Tech and Antoine Wyatt has been responsible for one hundred and eighty five yards of real estate here this afternoon. In terms of receiving yardage, kick returns, punt returns, even had an end around in the ball game. Lamont Pegues has come in at tailback now, and he'll get the call on first down. Pegues ran for 135 yards last year against the Yellow Jackets. There's the junior out of Florida. Mainland High School, I guarantee you that all those young pupils there watching Antoine are thinking, hey, one day I can grow up and be like Antoine Wyatt. Well, Rick Stockstill was on the Bethune-Cookman coaching staff at one time when Antoine was a little guy running around while his father Alvin was also on that coaching staff. Still is down there. Emery Smith straight ahead into the arms of Patrick Bradford, a couple of yards shy of the first down. Our lead third quarter stats show what the scoreboard shows. Domination by the Clemson Tigers, particularly in one stat that we don't have on the screen there, time on the clock. They oh, yeah. have really dominated there. Third and short for the Tigers with a minute gone by here in the fourth period. But just for 
for them to be over there average they average 150 yards a game in the air and to be over that with a quarter of football to go for Clemson football is a good sign. Huddle clock down to five. Green option to Pagese, but he doesn't get around the corner. Ryan Stewart with a great play. Down to the field in our Mike Hogwood. You saw Emmett Smith leave just a moment ago. He has a workout with the Cowboys this afternoon. At the beginning of this game, he was off on the sidelines, but as the game progressed, the Clemson coaches encouraged him to get involved. He was given Raymond Priester tips. He was sitting beside his brother Emery almost the whole game when they were on the bench. And on that last series, one of the coaches came up, looked Emmett in the face and says, you make sure he's ready to go next series. And then Emmett and his brother just embraced in a big bear hug, and Emmett told him he was proud of him, and he went off to practice. Kevin Laird will have to punt the ball away as, again, the Georgia Tech defense does its job. Look at the wind stand up that kick. It hit out of bounds at the 33 yard line. Just a 14 yard kick for Kevin Laird. 13 28 to play. Clemson by three touchdowns. 24 3, Clemson leading Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech with the football at its own. 33 yard line looking for a miracle of biblical proportions here in the final <laughs> quarter. And that Hogwood, he'll do anything to get some airtime. Now he's in the car. Donnie Davis still looking for his first completion of the second half. As he puts it up on first down, under duress, off the shoulder pad of Harvey Middleton at midfield. Yeah, see, they need a catch. harv has got to make that catch. It was a good read, a little power on the football, but when you're trailing, guys pumped up, ball's there, you got to complete those. The great contradiction of pass receiving, particularly in traffic, you have to have soft hands, but you have to go after the ball aggressively. Yeah. He tried to catch it with his pads. That's what Stan Hicks and the receiver's coach is telling him right there. Yeah, use those balls. Davis again straight back good time and he finds Stiegel underneath Stiegel with a lot of room Derek Stiegel up the sidelines finally wrestled down by Brian Dawkins at the 24 yard line of Clemson my 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 they found a way going underneath offensive line again hey Clemson knows he got to throw those linemen appeal back they're coming after you but the line has done a good job Good read on this too. If it's not there down top, don't force it. Take what the defense lends you. And this is just speed on linebacker. That's mismatch at that point. Steve they're trying to cut it on. Derek Stiegel runs the 55 meters indoors for the Georgia Tech track team. Motored 42 yards with that ball. Tech looking for a score and as quickly as possible with 12.45 to play in the game. They trail by 21. Davis in the air again. Downfield for Bainham, broken up nicely. Peeling back was Dexter McLean. Yeah, bad read. Anytime you have four orange shirts and one white shirt, that's a bad read. You gotta scan the field, just like you did on the prior play. See, this is telegraph. This is, I'm coming to you all day long. Myers doesn't have a shot, he's not open, and there's four people in that vicinity. McLean and Dawkins were right there. It'll be a second and 10. Quarterback can help himself jack by his eyes more than anything else in football. Stiegel to Davis is right. Middleton and Zachary to the left, and he's going for Middleton, and it's picked off on the deflection. Peter Ford with the football, back to the 25, make it the 27-yard line. Two flags on the play. And an injured Clemson Tiger. Leamon Evans was the guy who deflected the ball and then got waffled. Cedric Zachary will never know now what it would have been like. He was wide open. Michael Dover tells us a legal block on the return against the Tigers, but it will still be Clemson football. So this time Donnie gets back. He gets a little nudge at the end. But see Stegel at the bottom of your screen. Steagel's back after the return interception during the return. 
10 yard penalty spot a foul first down Peter Ford's first interception of the year will try and show you that replay again and what you don't see is Stegel is wide open make that Zachary Cedric Zachary's wide open and Donnie made up his mind he was going to push the ball downfield first turnover of the ball game as Davis is intercepted for the fourth time this season Liam on Evans who battled through some headache problems a season ago able to go off the field under his own power Clemson now looking to apply the finishing blow to this victory if they can and they put it into the midsection of Emory Smith who takes it out over the 20 yard line Ron Rogers the sophomore linebacker from nearby Dublin Georgia on the stop. Yeah Jack I agree I'd give you a large dose of Smith at this point. Here you watch it. See, this is good football because it's not overly complicated. There you watch Roundtree again, the right guard, who's had an outstanding ball game. Recovered the fumble, been blocking like a monster. Emory averaging 12 carries a ball game has carried it 20 times today. Lamont Pagese tried to cut back and came up shy of the first down. Ron Rogers and company there again. Tell you what, no lack of honor. But the guys that play defense for Tech, because they've been well represented. I mean, they play hard on every play. They've accepted the challenge. But defense, man, you need some help. And there's Ryan Stewart. He's been in on just about every run today. On third and short, Clemson brings Raymond Priester back into the ball game. They are 9 of 15 on third down. But many of those have come through the air and with the huddle clock running down Clemson had to take time their second time out of the of the second half their first here in the fourth quarter 11 10 to play so there is still time for Georgia Tech but they are going to have to force three and out situations the rest of the ball game out of that Clemson offense What's bothering Tommy West right now is the fact that his offense can't go in and finish the game a good football teams when they get you on the ropes they crush you and at this point now they've had to punt on some times that I'm sure he would like to send that message hey we're back we can run the football on you and we can walk out of here with a big time win elsewhere in college football it took Peyton Manning and company a while to warm up but they have a 35 to 7 advantage in Knoxville Duke leading Wake Forest in the second quarter as they try and get things going their way Penn State no problem at home against the Indiana Hoosiers this afternoon and look at that score 56 to nothing Ohio State trying to say hey we belong higher up than we are and Kansas State had its first loss a week ago trying to take it out of the Jayhawks this afternoon ACC football is brought to you in part by BMW the ultimate driving machine Clemson with an advantage of eight and a half minutes in terms of time of possession get a first down here and that margin will increase green bootleg himself but Jimmy Clemens Tried to stop him shy of the first down fighting off a block. It's going to be very close and there's also a flag on the play and it's going to be holding against Clemson. Jimmy Clements might have been the guy being held. He would stand for it. He's a little nicked up folks but you can't tell by his performance. Once that ball is snapped I mean, he goes into a rage. Holding offense. Here in the run. Ten yard penalty. By the foul. Third down. Clements the junior out of Marietta Georgia management major here at Georgia Tech stood tall on that one might have been close to a first down I'm not sure if they would have gotten it or not but might have been enough that Georgia Leary wanted to take the penalty and push them back but all that means now is that Neil will probably put the ball up yep. where he has been very successful today. Georgia Tech desperately looking for a turnover. Okay, Al Jackson makes something happen with those tackles, but gets some pressure on the quarterback. Instead, they give it to the fullback straight ahead. He gets it back out to the 20 yard line, but it'll force a Clemson punt as Emory Smith is brought down by Keith Brooking. You have to credit that Georgia Tech defense they've been on the field for much of the second half but they have allowed just three points. Big Will Young 
For having a fine job at left tackle. Looks like he got dinged up a bit. Chris McAnally with the wind in his face back into punt. Kevin Laird's last punt, the freshman, went only 14 yards. McAnally, good kick into the breeze, sends Perriman back to his 33 yard line. Nathan Perriman couldn't get around the corner. Good open field tackle by Tony DeSue. 47 yard punt, a nine yard return. 10 02 to play here in the fourth quarter at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Clemson on top. Back here in Atlanta, Georgia, Clemson leading 24 to 3. The time of possession strongly in favor of the guys in orange. Normally that's the home team, but of course the home colors are white and gold for Georgia Tech. Donnie Davis has been throwing a lot here in the second half, throwing for Harvey Middleton too far and pretty good pressure put on the play that time. Williams again. Yep, Brett Williams. Yeah. Taking a little air out of the B, huh? Well, it's been nightmare on North Avenue this Halloween weekend for hey, Georgia homecoming. Tech. It has definitely been a real pretty homecoming. There's a player you love to go into enemy territory at homecoming and ruin all the parties. It'll be homecoming next weekend at Clemson when we have these Tigers hosting North Carolina. Davis again. Williams puts the pressure on again. Davis avoids some of it. Now has to run out of bounds. Chased out by Brian Dawkins. Great play by Williams. <laughs> Loss of a yard or two. Let's go down to the field again at Mike Hogwood. Leomont Evans, who was injured on that last series, is back in the game now. He has a bruised shoulder, but is not hurting enough. He can't play. One other injury note, and that is Raymond Priester, who injured his ankle a bit last week. They've been running Lamont Pagese a lot at uh, tailback here with this 21-point lead, trying to keep that ankle rested. It is not fully 100%, but as we've seen, Priester can play if he has to. Donnie Davis, one of nine for 42 yards in the second half the long pass and run by Derek Stegall and he's got a third and 12 here blitz is on picked up they get it to Stegall trying to get away from McCrory Derek Stegall working upfield trying to get to the first down marker and he does Dexter McLean on the stop Derek Stegall the big play man for Georgia Tech keeps their fading hopes still alive here in the fourth quarter well one thing for sure Jack you know, you don't have a chance to win unless you get guys who elevate your game to a particular level. But this is an indication. This is a basic flat route. Now, you may not look like he's running that fast, but watch how he separates from people. And you, you think he's going to get stopped, but he doesn't until he picks up the first down. Four catches for 85 yards today for Stiegel. Draw play to Rodgers. Spins off a couple of men. Rodgers inside the 35-yard line. Gain of eight on the play. Andre Carter on the hit. It's a good effort. It really is. You, you, you find out a lot about teams and character when they're down. Will they quit? Who will compete? I mean, you see the block in that time. Like Bainham comes in, he gets a good block. Rogers over 1,700 yards last year at Pius X High School here in the greater Atlanta area. Davis under pressure, flag down, and he throws it away. But Patrick Sapp fighting against Jason Dukes forced Dukes to hold him. Sapp is still down. And that says a lot. When you pick up a flag and you can pick up a sack or you just create havoc, we hope this is not bad. Maybe it looks like a little rib cage or stomach. If you're not familiar with the story, Patrick Sapp spent three seasons at Clemson as a quarterback primarily the starting quarterback much of that time during a period in which the Clemson offense didn't perform as well as Patrick would have liked and obviously Tiger fans would have wanted to but made the commitment to still be a part of the team came over to defense and spring ball worked so hard he became a starter and look at that I mean he's giving away 50 pounds to Jason Dukes yet he had the leverage and he was the guy forcing the action 
Well, obviously, he broke all the quarterback records, strength records at Clemson. It's a guy bench press 355, 4540, a 32 vertical leap. And most of all, he has that instinct that I like. He can create, he can separate, and he gets after people. Looks to be okay as he heads to the sidelines after the penalty markoff. It's second and 20 now back into Georgia Tech territory with 836 to play in this one. Tigers again changing defensively, but they're just rushing four. Davis steps up and fires, and it is broken up, and that's a good call. Leamon Evans made contact with Cedric Zachary and no contact with the football. Yeah. Leamont, you have to always make the gesture like, who, me? I mean, you have to do that. Because sometimes you never know, you might sway somebody. But he's guilty. We had an offsides call as well. Let's watch the contact. Yeah. There's contact. Flush contact and not really an attempt Offense. to get the football. Declines the defensive offside. Pass interference, defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. It is not at the spot of the foul in college ball. It's the 15 yard penalty, as Michael Dover told you, but it's an automatic first down. So Tech gets the ball down to the 37 yard line of Clemson. That's the one. With a new set of downs. I love that look. When you're up 24 to 3 and your coach is frustrated, that tells me he set those goals really high. I, I really like Tommy West. Yeah. I think he is going to do a terrific job. I like his personality, his approach, just like George O'Leary here in Atlanta with Georgia Tech. Davis facing the blitz again, steps away from it, fires it to Stegall, and got a couple. Brian Dawkins on the hit. What do they do during spring ball and preseason? to keep Brian Dawkins from laying out offensive men for Clemson because this kid, number 20, just loves contact. Look at 40 in the middle of 90. He's just a human wrecking ball. He goes through three guys, forces Davis out of the pocket, and sets this big cruncher up. Best day for a tech receiver this year. Stiegel with five for 95. Davis looks for Bainham as tight end, and he'll gain short yardage as he goes out of bounds at about the 30 yard. Make that Chris Myers rather than Bainham. Andy McCrory on the stop. Leaves Georgia Tech four yards shy of a first down. Maybe a long three, actually. Donnie Davis waiting for the play to arrive from the sidelines as. Conrad Daniels, a freshman from Valdosta, brings in the play. Davis on the roll to the sidelines and a first down to Harvey Middleton. Middleton with the diving catches. Davis looked like he threw the slider low and away to get the first down. <laughs> Good, good action on the ball. Once again, there's Williams applying pressure. They can't cut him down. Yeah, that was. A little knuckler with a little spin on it. But he goes down and makes a good catch. Clock starts moving again after they've reset the chain. 7-10 to play here in the fourth quarter. Georgia Tech trying to narrow a 24-3 Clemson advantage. Davis to the end zone for Middleton. Nicely broken up by Antoine Edwards, the freshman from Starkville, Mississippi. Well, he used it all there. At 6'1", he's got some good size, 200-pounder. And again, he gets a good read on the ball. See, he's got his eyes on it. He readjusts because he got back and found the football. A lot of times, corners don't do this. See, at that point, he might as well be the receiver. Realizes he can't make the catch, so he knocks it away. That was an outstanding effort. Freshman. It's crazy. Isn't it? That's a good lot of freshmen on both sides yeah. of the football here today. The ACC has some outstanding freshmen. Davis on the quarterback draw. Raymond White on the stop, but it was Anthony Simmons who lined up as a nose guard. He has been doing that and then dropping back into coverage. This time he rushed. 
and it was the good move based on the play call. Yeah, it was. And again, you know, Cheevers doesn't expect him to come in. They try to make up a fourth with Minter, but again, it's just pressure. These guys come at you, man. There, Raymond White. He picks up one this young man, a freshman, another freshman, who's just played outstanding football. Started today, leading tackler with 81. Had well, sack, picked up a sack today. Today it's just been an average day for Andy. He's at the sack and only eight tackles today. But yeah. By and down. large, he's been outstanding, and we'll see more of Anthony Simmons one week from today. Next Saturday, the Clemson Tigers hosting the North Carolina Tar Heels for our ACC Exxon Game of the Week. 12 o'clock kickoff. Check your local listings for the station in your area. It was going to be neat. It's Carolina with that ferocious pass rush. I mean, they've really turned up the intensity defensively. Chapel Hill, so we're going to, it's going to be a war, another war. And a very similar situation of two teams trying to climb up the ladder to ensure as big a bowl possibility as they can. We've already got the open done. <laughs> Bowers, the lone setback. He's in there in all likelihood to try and protect Donnie Davis on third down. Picks up McCrory downfield. Good job by Zachary to dot the eye inside the 10 and get the first down. Real nice. That's not easy to do, folks. You got your mind A on the route to the defender, then the ball, then you got to find the yard marker. Again, good pass set. Excellent pass set. Salage inside the guard. Watch this. See what? See him look down. First and goal inside the eight yard line in the scoring zone and this is the first time they have been in the scoring zone inside the 25 tech is 22 of 25 on the season davis pump fake zachary to the corner it sails over his head dexter mcleon on the coverage a little shake and go doc yeah they tried it looks like they tried to work him in and then Hit that plant foot and kind of work his way back out. I'm telling you, under the circumstances, I continue to be impressed with this offensive line of Tech. And I mean, they've been going up against some real legitimate pressure. They will lose two men Michael Cheever, their terrific center, and Jason Dukes at right tackle, but Minter and McGee and Salaz will all be back. Tight ends are both back next year. Davis with time skipped off the hands of Stiegel under pressure from Andy McCrory. Talked about uh, Salaj 64. The young man is a red shirt sophomore and I love his pass set. I mean this guy has an outstanding pass set. They see guys fight. They continue to fight. They just need a playmaker. They need somebody else to come up and make a play. Johnny Davis knowing that pass was going to be in traffic really fired a bullet. And it looked like it it surprised Stiegel its velocity. You got to look at Ken Salaj, the young man from Armont, New York, at right guard trying to protect his quarterback. With a broken finger, too. I mean, the guy playing in pain. Here comes the blitz. Sap pressures, and the ball goes out of the end zone. Patrick Sapp, Anthony Simmons, the guys coming in, as well as Brett Williams. They sent all three linebackers on that play. And Williams a little dinged up on that one. So you get Adrian Dingle, he comes in. That's the thing, they've rotated players real well. See the inside pressure by the great freshman. Simmons, he forced that ball astray. They might have had a play. So Georgia Tech will try it again on fourth down. Trying to get into the end zone. They have scored only one touchdown the last two weeks against Florida State and Clemson. Davis rolls to avoid some of the pressure. Now he's in trouble and down he goes. Another super week for the Clemson defense. Andy McCrory gets the sack, the fourth of the afternoon for the Tigers. Don't tell this group that they can't D up, because they have done it today in outstanding fashion. 
team speed, the scheme is right. Fundamentally, they're in good positions. You see Sapp outside, he never loses outside shoulder. He maintains that and still fighting off a guy, forces Davis, the quarterback, to put the ball down, and the rest is having orange crush defense. Miles Aldridge and Ellis Johnson, the co-off defensive coordinators, have coordinated some defense the last two weeks, haven't they? Maestros. Short yardage on first down for Emory Smith. All Clemson wants to do now is move the chains a few times and salt this one away with six minutes to play. Yeah, I think Coach Coach West would be disappointed if they give the ball back at this point. I mean, good football teams, the power football teams, they, they have a, an ability to take five minutes off the clock at the end of the game and close it. It was 3 nothing. Georgia Tech early on, but 24 straight points for the Tigers. Raymond Priester back in the ball game. He carries it out over the 20-yard line. Ron Rogers with another stop for the Yellow Jackets. This is always my favorite, favorite part of the game at the end if you're winning. And you get to just let the air out of the ball. You start pounding people up front. And Starting to get, you know, you, now you just know you're setting up the film work. So the Carolina looks at the film. You want to look strong at the end. You want to send a message to them that they better bring the lunch pail. Tigers need four. And it's Green giving it to Emory Smith, and he doesn't get it. Georgia Tech calls its. Second time out with 448 to play. That's just good defense. I'm, I'm telling you right now that they, they got to be disappointed over there on the Clemson sidelines. Granted, they got the score up now, but if I'm Carolina, I'm watching this and I'm thinking, hey, when they wanted to do it now three times, they couldn't do it. You know, and that gives you a little confidence. That sets up a battle. Of course, you look back to the fact, Doc, that in the first half, when they had those third down situations and really where it paid off for them, they did it through the air, going to Wyatt and Tony Horn as Nelon Green was the man to do it. And now I think as it's gone on here, you're right, you want to make those first downs on the ground, but I think they've also been as basic as they could be yeah. in well, terms of protecting the ball. They're trying to slug it out, but they're not a throwing team by nature. And so you want to be able to win it on the ground. And again, Tech is just, they've never quit. They have never quit, and defensively, it's just been a, a, a sterling effort. Chris McAnally will come back on to punt. Nathan Perriman now moving up a little bit, figuring the win will stand that ball up. They've got 10 on the line of scrimmage, the Jackets, as they shift around a little bit. And they run into McAnally, and his punt runs all the way down to the 31-yard line. Omar Cassidy got a piece of McAnally. The question is, it's only the five-yard penalty, but they only needed two yards, so it will be a first down. Yeah, when you're in that circumstance, you have to go where you think the ball will be. You got to lay out in the area where the ball will be taken right off its foot. If you get any claw for a body, then you're wrong. Your aiming point is off. Well, it looked like Cassidy and Curtis Holloman ran into each other, mm -hmm. and that that momentum carried into McAnally. Well, that's all by design, because it's usually one guy you set up so one guy gets a clean, clean run. Neilon Green, maybe his best game yet in a Clemson uniform for the sophomore from Yonkers, New York. Gives it to Priester, the tailback. Priester banging straight ahead, carries Nick Ferguson over the 40-yard line for a first down. Best run for the gimpy Raymond Priester fighting that sprained ankle. And I think he's back in there for that reason, to end this thing and close it out strong. Up front again, big boys up front pounding it. It's a good lead. There's Emory, the nice block. There's our guy, Glenn Roundtree, who's had just a, he's had a real good ball game. Recovering that fumble, that bundled, he's got a chip in on at the end. Took four guys to bring Priester down. First and 10, Clemson. Priester 
Schuster again. Good cutback. Mike D has him, but not before he gets it out to about the 47-yard line. Keith Brooking also there. Under four minutes to go, and Clemson is going to break the pattern for the first time this year. They're going to win an even-numbered game to go to five and three on the season. Tech will have their first loss at home. And how about the Tigers at four and zero oh on the road in the ACC this year? That is well, that's difficult in any game. Any you're right. Priester straight ahead, right into Brooking and threw him for another Clemson first down. Yeah. This is this is what I was looking for. I was looking for that point where you start to pound and you pound and you pound, and sooner or later you get submission. And that's what everybody wants. Every offensive team wants that. You want submission. That's when you're coming off the ball, you got a good fit, you're driving, and the opposition is going backwards. And that's a good linebacker there. And Keith Brooken. So if you start knocking these guys backwards, then they've just taken all they can take. Priester now with over 800 yards on the season for the sophomore, who was a fullback a year ago. This time it is the fullback, Emory Smith, ahead for a couple. Al Jackson and Ralph Hughes. Clemson, as we told you, will be one of our teams in our game of the week next week against North Carolina. Georgia Tech will go back out onto the road and go to Winston-Salem to play Wake Forest. And Coach O'Leary, they'll get the troops together. I thought, he, I thought he hit it right on the nose when he talked to Mike Hogwood at halftime. He said, we just got to get out and tackle. We got to block. And we got to play the game the way we know we can. Well, they just never got into the spirit of this football game. Anthony Downs has come into the ball game now at tailback. And Downs gets the call trying to turn the corner. And Ryan Stewart, the strong safety, says, no, you're not. Yeah. They got past Ryan once in the past, but on the run, uh, not, I don't think it's going to happen. Downs he plays that perimeter well. Downs, who was a starter at tailback a couple of seasons ago. Watch this. It's just the idea who wants that. Do you want to make the block or do you want to stop it? That was all Ryan Stewart. And when you stalk block, that's what Henry Guess was trying to do. You don't do it up around the shoulder pads. You got to get down to the lower part of the number. A strike. You got to deliver a blow. Smith, the fullback, slides off the pile and gets a first down. Emory Smith just kept those big legs a churning, and he keeps Clemson moving downfield. Emory with 25 carries on the day now for 96 yards. Smith inside of his first 100-yard game of the season in the closing moments of this one. So they let the air out of it now. Will Young, Trevor Putman, Glenn Roundtree, Dwayne Morgan. Bundren, Robert Jackson, that offensive line, tight ends. Boy, you earned your milkshakes this week. How about over 1,300 yards between Smith and Priester this year? Anthony Down slips through Stewart this time inside the 30. Mike D on the stop. Anthony Downs, the sophomore, is 6'1, 200 pounder from Greenville. Fresh legs, too. Did he look quick? Yes, he did. Boy, he looked quick hitting outside. Last time, more than 20 years since Georgia Tech has scored only three points here at home, and they had over 45,000 on hand here today. Zach, you think Emory will get a shot at 100 yards? I don't know if they know it. Well, they give him the football. I think they know it. And he's going to be close, but I think he might end up being a yard or two shy. Final play of the football game. Big day for Emory Smith. Big day for the Clemson Tigers as they dominate the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets in a physical football game, winning it 24-3. We knew it would be a physical game, although ironically, in the first half, Doc, it was the passing of Nelon Green that really broke the game open for yeah, the Tigers. It broke it open, made the big plays, but it was still King Kong and Godzilla. And I guess King Kong has on an orange shirt. And next week is going to be a similar matchup with the Tar Heels 
and the Tigers go at it. I mean, I can hardly wait for that one. Well, they officially credit Emory Smith with four yards on that last carry, so he does have a 100-yard afternoon. <laughs> and I think Tommy West is going to say, hey, let's bring Emmett to every game because his little brother plays very well. Tommy West is down in the field with Mike Hogwood. Well, we'll ask him about that. We're, we're saying you might ought to ask Emmett to come to every game. He had <laughs> pretty good luck today. Yeah, we're going to put him in uniform next time and play him. <laughs> Awesome performance for that Tiger offense in the first half. Well, I thought our offensive line came to play. That's a pretty good challenge when you play the number one Russian defense in the country. That's a good challenge for us. You know, you've had a couple of big wins in the last two weeks. Now this team has a lot to play for. Yeah, well, we've had a lot to play for. We've just been behind the eight ball a little bit. But, yeah, you know, this team just keeps working hard and practicing hard, and, and, and I think we're improving every week. What about the, the defense on this team? Two weeks in a row that they've not allowed a touchdown. There's a lot of pride out there at the end of this game today. Oh, I tell you what we're doing. Our coaches are doing an excellent job, but uh, we're playing together very well right now. I think we're a very cohesive group defense. I mean, we got some seniors mixed in with it are doing an outstanding job. Well, now that uh, you've got five and three on the year, you're in a position now to go out and try to get a bowl game. These guys know what's ahead, but it's still not going to be easy down the stretch. No, it's not easy in this conference. I mean, it's a heck of a league now. And, uh, but we can't worry about a bowl game right now. we got to take them one, one week at a time. Well, Coach, we've been with you two weeks in a row. You mind if we join you again next week, Carolina? No, we'll, we'll, we'll invite you all to Clemson this time. We'll, we'll be in Clemson next week. Look okay. forward to seeing Thanks, you Thanks, Mike. Tommy West, victorious today, Jack. All right, Mike. Like I said, one of the real nice men in college football as Emory Smith talks to some family members on a good day here in Atlanta, Georgia, Clemson deflating the Yellow Jacket here this afternoon. 24 to 3, Clemson wins it. There you see our score here this afternoon in Atlanta. Clemson comes in and keeps itself unbeaten on the road in conference play. It's fourth conference win all the way from home as they make it an unhappy homecoming here in front of 45,000, 24 to 3. And Doc, there were uh, uh, quite a few heroes. I don't know if we could single out anybody individually on the defensive side for Clemson because they have really taken on uh, that Clemson feel of old when their defense would just dominate. I think as a coach, that's exactly what you like. And I think Tommy West alluded to that, talking to Mike Hogwood, is that from a team scheme right now, they have a bounce in their step. You know what I mean? You get a shutout, and you start to say, hey, can we get another one? And can we stop people from scoring touchdowns on it? You can't run wide. They stop you in the middle. Those two linebackers and Simmons, that freshman, it's an extraordinary play. Well, let's take a look at our Carolina Chrysler Plymouth players of the game. There are lots of heroes. Antoine Wyatt had a great game, but Doc and I both felt that Nelon Green had his best overall game as a Tiger. Went 10 of 13, the two touchdown passes to Antoine Wyatt. And Donnie Davis was the lone bright spot for Georgia Tech, but unfortunately for Donnie and his team, uh, first time in over 20 years that they couldn't put a touchdown on the board here at home. Yeah, it's disappointing. I mean, their defense played well. This was this, this number one ranked run defense in the nation represented itself well. They came up against uh, a team with more balance than they anticipated, but they still played hard. I think it was indeed that balance that helped Clemson out here this afternoon. We'll be talking with more of the Clemson heroes from this game here this afternoon right after we take this time out. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week was brought to you by your neighborhood Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to try Exxon gasolines with the power to drive down maintenance cost. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By First Union, when it comes to service, everything matters. By your friends at Toyota, for quality and value that's simply the best, see your local Toyota dealer today. By Outback Steakhouse, no rules, just right. By your Carolina Chrysler and Plymouth dealers, home of the minivan store. And by Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. Gorgeous, albeit windy day here in Atlanta. The wind was not a factor in terms of disrupting the Clemson passing attack as Nelon Green and Antoine Wyatt hooked up on a number of big plays to power that Clemson offense when they needed it. Doc, you're an old tight end. I played wide receiver myself. 
Sometimes it's hard for people to understand when, when we talked about during the game where you get a, a rhythm, a, a chemistry, the, the word we always use in, in telecast, but that feeling between quarterback and receiver, once you get that, uh, feels like you can do it every time. Yes, confidence. You know, as a receiver, you have to have a feel for where the ball is going to be. And quarterbacks who are hot tend to put it on the numbers. And if you get a breakaway, you can catch the ball in stride. That was what happened today with Nelon Green. And Antoine Wyatt just went nuts because he's like, finally, this guy is get doing what he does in practice. Because I'm sure he has good practices, but he hadn't been able to translate that into the game. Yeah, the maturity, the, the growing uh, confidence of Nelon Green has made a difference for that Clemson passing game. Nelon and Antoine Wyatt down on the field with our Mike Hogwood. We're, of course, with... Nelon Green and Antoine Wyatt, you guys really had it going today. What was the story out there? I mean, they, they, they kept biting on um, the option all day, and then um, Antoine was fortunate enough to, you know, get behind their, um, their um, free safety, and um, I was fortunate to have the um, offensive line, you know, to block real well today, and um, all I had to do was deliver the, pa the passes. Antoine, man, you had some catches. Yeah, all credit goes to Nelon and the offensive line. I mean, uh, and no, I saw you laying it out over the there. The coaches also, they put us in a situation to make plays, so we got to give credit to them, too. Well, that's awful nice of you to give credit, but uh, I know you and the Clemson offense have been waiting a long time for this kind of a day where you just came out in the first half and really took it to them, not only on the ground, but in the air as well. I mean, I think that's the key to us winning all our ball games. We have to keep them unbalanced. We can't be one-dimensional like we've been in the in, uh, previous three games, I believe. We won last week. We were one-dimensional. But because I guess we were a lot better team. But this week, we played a great Georgia Tech team, which we had to be unbalanced to keep them off their feet. Mm -hmm. Neon, how tough was it throwing with that win today? I mean, it wasn't that tough. Um, situations got, got good for us in the first half because um, Raymond was running the ball real effective and um, Emery. I mean, I give those guys credit for opening up the passing game. Once they get going running the ball, I mean, there's no key on the pass. And Antoine and Tony Horn and um, all the rest of our receivers, you know, did a great job getting open. All right, you know, this team has a lot to play for right now. You guys have put yourself in pretty good position. I'll get both of you to comment on that. Yeah, I mean, coming down the stretch, we got to win these games, and we got to take it one game at a time. I mean, we can't go out and you know, look forward, look ahead. I mean, one game at a time, and um, um, in, the, in the future, things take care of itself. You know what's ahead, too. Yeah, I know. Uh, a great North Carolina team that's been kind of off and on this year. But, you know, we just have to play them next week. Worry about our uh, dupe when we get to them. I mean, just play one game at a time, like Leonard said. Guys, congratulations. Great performance today. Great performers on the field, and not too bad handling those Hogwood questions, too. We'll be back with more from Atlanta after these messages from your local ACC station. Clemson 24, Georgia Tech 3, as Clemson goes to 5-3 and three on the season, and just as importantly, maybe more importantly, 4-2 and two in the conference, keeping their hopes for a bowl game alive. And as you heard the two young men talk, Doc, that Tommy West has got him pretty well schooled to worrying about it one week at a time. When you're a young team, you can't start thinking a month ahead. You can't look more than six days. Well, you can't admit it, especially on television, but, you know, it's human nature. Uh, but when you've been struggling a bit or not playing the best you can play, you do tend to follow what the coach says. Now, if you get a couple of wins under your belt, then you get cocky. You can't get cocky with Carolina coming to Death Valley because Carolina can beat anybody that they're, they're on for. First time this season that Georgia Tech, or excuse me, that Clemson has won two ball games in a row, and they want to build on that. When we take a look at the final numbers, a couple of very dominant areas for Clemson, but I think most impressively, look how balanced they were, Doc. Well, that's, that's the best it's been all year for them. Over their 150 yards per uh, rushing, or passing rather, that they had, and the rushing total. When you get almost 200 yards against Tech, I mean, again, it's a double milkshake week. They deserved that, and they did it the old-fashioned way. They plowed it out offensively on the ground and no turnovers. So for Nelon Green, that's a special stat. And more than 12 more minutes of clock runoff by Clemson. Also, second straight week without a touchdown for the Clemson defense. One of their heroes, Patrick Sapp, with our Mike Hogwood. Patrick Sapp. Well, we talked a lot about it. You made that transition from quarterback to defense. You were going after it today. <laughs> well, you know, we knew we had to come in and just cut it loose because they was big up front and they were going to try to run the ball at us. So we know we had to rep back and try to come out and make some plays for some losses. You look really comfortable on defense. You're feeling really good there now? Well, yeah, at this point in the season, you know, I've seen every kind of offense. And, you know, I've made the adjustment, and now I'm just playing ball using my talent. 
What about this team? You've been through some up times and some down times. Kind of neat now to have this up period, isn't it? Well, the only thing I can say about this team, you know, we're just a fighter. Last year we had a bad season. I had some bad times, but I kept fighting and the teams kept fighting. And now I think we're turning things around. What's ahead? Well, we got home coming next week, North Carolina. You know, in Clemson, it's good to be back home, and you know it's going to be the same type of game this weekend. This defense hadn't allowed a touchdown in a couple of weeks. You got a little streak going now. Well, hopefully we can contain North Carolina and do the same. All right, Patrick, congratulations. Right. Good game today. Jack? It'll be a challenge for them to stop Leon Johnson, Mike Thomas, and company it. next week. Our game of the week. We'll be back to talk about that, get you set for other things in college football in a moment. Welcome back to Atlanta where Clemson wins its fifth game of the year to go to five and three overall and twenty four to three the final here this afternoon. One of the big matchups in the ACC will be played this coming Thursday as the Florida State Seminoles keep trying to run the table if you will in conference play. They have yet to lose a ball game in conference play but they're going up against a fellow top twenty five team this coming Thursday up in Charlottesville against the Virginia Cavaliers. Let's talk a little bit about that game doc. Well I just love Virginia's secondary uh, and I think it's going to be the ultimate match for Cannell and his great receiver Corp. So you're coming down now and you've got great backs involved in this game done and I kind of like to see Florida State play four quarters you know and that that could be a nightmare for Rick Lance and the defense at Virginia but I think they'll be more than competitive. They've got the tools to get it done but can you get over the psychological barrier of no one's ever beat Florida State in conference and who knows. Well, Doc, uh, you're a guy who grew up in Southern California, played at UCLA. Here we are. We're getting into November next week. It's going to be a night game in Charlottesville. It's going to be in November. Might be a little chilly. Do you think that'll be a factor for those Knolls? Well, I'd have to say yes, because when you're used to nice weather, like, I mean, me out in Southern California, you do get in. I remember we played the Liberty Bowl once. It may have been 15 or 16 degrees or so. I didn't want to come out of the locker room. And so weather does create a factor, but nothing more than a defensive line putting pressure on the quarterback. If the Cavaliers, if those down linemen, Dwayne Ashman and company, if they get to Canal, which no one has really done, that will be a factor in the game. And Florida State's defense, they've heard everybody knocking them all year. I think they're going to come up large. Well, the other thing to, to talk about as we wrap up our, our conversation about Florida State and Virginia, I think a little bit Florida State has been unfairly uh, criticized because of how well and how large their margins of victory how well they've played and how big the victories have been and, and people have downplayed who they've beaten rather than given them mm -hmm. enough credit for how well they have played. Oh, they're fantastic and if you bring in your second team guys or third team guys and they just happen to be two time Gatorade player of the year players they're just doing what they do naturally. They're well coached. They have a great scheme. Canal has had a phenomenal year and you just have to give them their credit and those guys on the outside those receivers are special. They're number one in the country, but Virginia wants to spring the biggest upset of the year. That'll be a great game Thursday night. We'll be back with final thoughts from Atlanta after this. Next Saturday, we'll be in Death Valley, Clemson, South Carolina, as the Tigers celebrate their homecoming against the North Carolina Tar Heels at 12 o'clock. And Doc, a big challenge because that'll be the best offense they've faced all year, Clemson against that North Carolina attack. Just a lot of talent. I mean, Carolina to give a good chance to see another outstanding wide receiver, a breakaway threat, but their defense, they get after you, they rush the quarterback. I can hardly wait. Should be a dandy indeed. We want to thank all the people who have brought you the sounds and the pictures of this one. We'd I'd also like to thank uh, Andy Vetlis, our statistician up here, and Al Littlejohn, our stage manager, and of course his wife, Ginger, who is without question the best spotter in all of college football. She makes Absolutely. Doc and I sound like we know what we're talking about. We thank have her. Call one of these That's weeks. right. Next week, Carolina at Clemson, 12 o'clock kickoff. Check your local listings for the station in your area. Jefferson Pilot Sports Production staff outfitted by Lee Apparel, the brand that fits. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football. For Mike Hogwood and Doc Walker, Jack Horgan saying so long from Atlanta, Clemson wins it big over Georgia Tech.